out of everything. <laughs> I, I mean, because when you when look, Lamar, when you when you when you deal in truth and you speak in truth, man, it's 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 kind of hard not to have a counter to everything, man. But anyway, we live, man. Welcome back to Man Down Sports. We live on the IOW uh YouTube page as well as the Man Down YouTube page. Because yes, we got an ILW guest here, Lamar here, uh, familiar with the show, always here, uh, either in spirit or in the comic section or uh, as oh, a yeah. guest, man. So it's good to have him as a guest today, man. We got a lot of topics we want to run down, NFL, NBA, uh, and, and all of those things, man. NFL schedule is out, man, so we'll touch on that, man. Uh, but, uh, man, last night, man, the, the Phoenix Suns got eliminated in horrible fashion. Kevin Durant didn't look good. Booker didn't look good. The whole thing, the Suns team didn't look good. DeAndre Ayton didn't, didn't play. play for bruised ribs. Um, and Jokic, bro, they they let uh, Caldwell Pope run through them, man. He dropped 17 on them in the first quarter. The game was over in the first quarter. KCP had in L.A.? He was, I mean, KCP was hitting, he was hitting threes in L.A., but it was just, out. he was off and on. But you you know how that story goes when yeah. you're playing uh, with a ball-dominant uh player no, and your job is to catch hey, man shoot. i like what you say you 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 don't say the name but ball dominant player hey <laughs> say it say it lebron jack lebron james what, which it. is interesting but it's interesting because lebron's not ball dominant this year this year it, it, after the trade after the trade yes after the trade. i agree with you yeah he's been he, he's look he's look good man we might talk about some of that man but but first um um eight and then play KD played horrible. However, they was up one when KD went to the bench in the first quarter. And then they went on like a 17-0 run or something like that. Denver did. While KD was sitting there watching from the bench. And after that, it was over. You know, so uh uh I don't I don't know what to attribute that to. They didn't show up ready. That's that's for sure. But um here's the conversation that everybody is having on all the networks and all the social media. A sweep by Brooklyn uh, against Boston last year, and this year in the second round against Jokic, you lose in a horrible fashion. Even though you did get two games out of it, uh, you still lose in a horrible fashion in Game Six. And now everyone is saying, "Is KD still that dude? Can we start questioning his legacy? Uh, where he, what did he place at uh, all time? Is Steph better than him? All these questions are coming out, and I just want to hear from y'all." Uh, are we supposed to start looking at Kevin Durant different and start looking at his legacy different just based on this playoff run and this season? What's y'all thoughts? You want it, Chris? I'm the resident KD fan, so I'll let you go first <laughs> before I before I, I shred the airways. Well, I mean, it's, it's no secret. We, we all recognize KD's talent as a basketball player. But I think what we we really need to look at is him as a person he just wants to play ball you know what i'm saying so if you asking him people are putting these expectations on him like he's supposed to be like a lebron or curry or 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 jordan to be like the magnifying or the the, the, the standard barrier of, of what a leader is supposed to be but not everybody has that you know rah rah top type of leadership you know or bark at your teammates you know, not everybody's going to have that Kobe Jordan mentality. So I just, I look at Katie as in, he's just a basketball minded person. He just wants to hoop where he doesn't care about all this social media stuff, even though he gets involved in it. He say he don't care, but he does. And it's like, I mean, let's, let's be honest. The man don't brush his hair. Don't put no lotion on. I ain't never seen with a, with a lady. Ain't even heard no rumors with him with a lady. So, like, he's about basketball, dog. <laughs> like, for real. So, that's how I look at him, and that's how I see his legacy. Now, I look at his legacy talent-wise. I don't look at it, you know. I mean, they're always going to bring up him going to Golden State. They're always going to bring that up. But, I mean, we've had debates about it on, on the show before. You know, the Warriors needed him just as much as he needed the Warriors. So, at the end of the day, he's he's – He's just going to always be a talented piece on your squad. But if you're looking for that leader, rah, rah, you know, hey, let's push through, play the mental game. That ain't him, man. Go ahead, Chris. Shred it up. Um, 
So if we want to talk about Kevin Durant's legacy due to these playoff woes as of late, in the same breath, you have to mention LeBron's legacy, how he got swept twice in the finals. The times that he got bounced, he didn't first he didn't make the playoffs with the Lakers. The, when he got bounced in the first round by the Suns, we got to talk about that too. If that's if that's a tarnish on on KD's legacy, then it's a tarnish on LeBron's legacy as well. But we don't hear that much about the two sweeps in the finals, the getting bounced in the first round, the not making it, not even making the play in. So I don't think it's I don't think it's that much of a hit on 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 Kevin Durant's legacy. Like you said, he he wants to, he just wants the ball. And you have to take into account everything that happened this season, right? The turmoil in Brooklyn, getting traded, uh, the injuries, two injuries in Phoenix. So he was he had the injury when he got traded. He came back, played three games, and got hurt on a freak injury again. So he never really got – no matter how good he and Booker looked in the playoffs, that's him and Booker. They are hoopers, certified ballers. No matter what, they're going to look good. So you put them together, cool, right? But he still doesn't have the chemistry with the rest of the team. They've only played at less than 20 games together, including uh, regular season and playoffs, right? Less than 20 games. Not to mention, you lost your bench in getting KD. So Booker and KD have been putting up astronomical numbers, numbers, right? And logging crazy minutes logging crazy minutes both of them were averaging over 30 so i think booker was booker was leading the playoffs averaging 36 and kd was sixth averaging 30 even that's crazy when your two players two players are accounting for almost 70 points a game by themselves you don't think that's taxing not to mention let's let's talk about how they bounced the clippers in five a clippers team that with no Kawhi and with no pg was a very well-built team and they hey, still you know was crazy. running them. You know what's crazy, Chris? I can make a case that the Clippers could have won that series. And they should have. The Clippers could have won that series. They was in every game. Yeah. It wasn't until middle end of the fourth quarter, Phoenix would get a crazy run, and and then uh, Westbrook would be the Westbrook of old, or mm -hmm. uh, the Clippers just uh, start turning the ball over. And then it was it just became insurmountable. But you can say that the Clippers was in every game, and they stole the first one. Mm -hmm. they stole the first one so it was oh man you know and they were even with even without Kawhi and pg after what game two they were still in every game it was back and forth like me watching those games i was nervous i'm like man if if the, if katie gets bounced in the first round by the clippers with That's no crazy. pg and no Kawhi, i crazy. can't defend that i cannot yeah. defend that so after i mean every, it, it, it was probably going to happen though i mean because if you want to be honest about it the Phoenix Suns had no business even being competitive in the playoffs. Like, ser like seriously, like, just like you said, man, get, getting rid of – like, Jay Crowder was a big piece they, they was trying to keep. For some reason, yeah, they couldn't, they oh couldn't figure it out. Yeah. You know, so they, uh, they had to let him go. It's another uh, score. They, they, they traded Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson, let him go uh, to bring KD in. And then, you know, CP3 is, is, is 38, 39 years old, man. I don't, I don't know what you can expect from all that. And that's a max player, so – as he far could, as bringing somebody could, in to help, you know, they were strapped financially, right? Now, now I, I've been saying this even before the playoffs started. I was like, the Phoenix Suns should have never went to war with the soldiers that they had. They should have grabbed more reinforcements, and they didn't have to make a trade to do it after the KD situation. They could have went and just grabbed Dwight Howard. He was in shape. He was playing in Taiwan. And would you rather have Dwight Howard trying to guard Jokic, or would you rather have Aiden trying to guard him? Or uh, Landell or Bismarck, uh, Biombo, or Biombo. they could have went and got Boogie Cousins. Would you rather have mm -hmm. Boogie Cousins, who played with Jokic last year, so he he practiced with him for at least half a season? Would you rather have Jokic trying to guard him, and then Jokic have to come out to the uh, three point line where uh, Boogie Cousins ranges it, right, and and at least put some pressure on Jokic defense uh, uh, on the defensive end? Like, so you had two options as a free agent. De Demarcus Cousins and De uh, and Dwight Howard, it wouldn't have cost you nothing but the vet nothing. minimum. They could they could have easily made their bench better. They could have mm. easily got. More, would, would you rather uh, come off the bench and and have uh, Tory Craig shooting your threes or Carmelo Anthony shooting your threes? You get what I'm saying? Like, did you really want campaign to jump in the starting lineup when you wasn't even playing him before, <laughs> right? Or would you rather have somebody like Rondo out there 
that you just could have written easily grab from free agency so the Phoenix Suns as a front office didn't do what they supposed to do after they got Kevin Durant but that's the story of Kevin Durant's life because uh, teams think once they get Kevin Durant the offense is just so all right man so everything's good now like you know we don't even have to really call plays for him just giving the ball and, and let him iso and he go shoot the jump shot but you now you got to do a little bit more work too you know uh so they made everything too hard for him uh and they didn't have no help uh no, no you know no bench you know no 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 scoring other than booking and Kevin Durant man that was just a tough sale and they made a good go of it however let's get to this whole thing you know Dino said what is KD's legacy uh as a, as a now uh j- just to answer the question I don't think his legacy changes because we understand why he's not making playoff runs right now he he, he hasn't had any continuity for the last three or four years you know the Brooklyn situation was crazy and they never did let them get their feet set to actually doing anything you know what I'm saying so you know once, once they actually got good and they started playing together that first year and then they made their playoff run and they was about to put out the bucks but Kevin uh but uh Kyrie Irving uh tore his ankle up and then uh the next game after that James Harden tore his ham or his hamstring up you know it was it was it, that, that was the best we was gonna see them and we thought we was gonna see it again the next season when they both came in healthy but Kyrie got suspended for not taking the vax and then Harden asked for the trade, and then they bring Ben Simmons in, and Ben Simmons can't play because he's back, and he's on the max contract that straps them. And then the next season came, and they thought they was gonna try to bear to do something again, uh, uh, but Kevin Durant goes down hurt, and you know it, it, it's just it was just too much going on. He never had a, a season where it was like from start to finish they got continuity going, and they went into the playoffs whole with a with a, with a, a squad built around him. They can actually do something, man. So his legacy is. He's a champion, two-time champion, two-time MVP, four-time scoring title, a great defender. Uh, now he wasn't before he uh, when he first started in OKC. A great defender now, mm-hmm. uh, a stone cold killer, uh, a top. I would say a top five talent player, but when you add his resume, it drops him down to probably top ten, um, and, and maybe a little bit outside of the top ten. Um, but you know, re- resume and talent wise, got him in the top ten for me. But his reputation is just uh is just shot uh from all the shots he's been taking for you know some of his personal decisions and stuff like that man so that's that's how i see his legacy i was just thinking <clears throat> kevin durant kind of reminds me of rob gronkowski and in this sense as in the talent's been there does you know astronomical numbers champion but then you look at the injuries that kind of bring Bring him back down to earth where he his, his he's not so elevated as much if, if it makes sense because Gronkowski was doing st- stupid crazy numbers and winning championships but then throwing the injuries there's times he's not available for championship runs and he's right. not available for Super Bowls so it's right. like that makes a difference on whether your team succeeds getting a championship or not. And, and it kind of reminds me of KD. And, you know, to your point of the, uh, you know, the continuity part, like, that's been big. He hasn't had that since Golden State. And you see the difference on the trajectory of how people view him just off of that ever since he's left. I mean, it's just yeah. been injury after injury after injury. And you're like, yo, bro, like, you, like when you're healthy and you ain't got no, you know, problems with the injuries, we know how bad you are. But it's like, dude, man. Yeah. I need you to. And, I need to be on the court. And this is the crazy thing about um, once, 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 uh, once the injury start doing whatever it's doing, once your reputation starts taking a hit and stuff like that, the NBA because the, the NBA as a business they got to figure out what team, what franchise, what players that that's going to be the face of their league, that's going to be the marquee players because they got to use those players to market the league, right? So they got they they really got to make business decisions on who we're gonna give favor to, and 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 make no doubt about it, players have favor in the league, right? Mm-hmm. They, they, I mean, we call them star calls, but you know, uh, pay, players have favor and some players don't have favor. And when you're a player that don't have favor going up against a player that does, or a team that don't have favor going up against a team that does, it's an uphill battle for you. And Kevin Durant has put himself in the conversation of the player. He's a superstar still, but with no favor. Mm-hmm. So the, the the league gives him no favors. So the star calls that he's supposed to get, he's not getting. So when you saw him against Boston last year, 
a rough we're like, man, I, I've never seen no one let that happen to a superstar, man. Like, like, well, like, rough like him up, dog. yeah. And we just chalked it up to playoff basketball. Oh, it's playoff basketball, and that's it's that's ninety style basketball. But then you seen when Boston played against uh uh, uh the Warriors in the finals, they didn't let them do that to Steph Curry. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? so the difference between. Uh, whether you're blowing up with uh, points or not is how they're gonna let you defend them. And Kevin Durant don't have that favor no more. He just don't. So, it, so it's, yeah. So everything is uphill for him. But let yeah. me play this soundbite real quick. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get y'all thoughts on it. I think KD has let them down because my final point, and this will hit your heart. KD is one of the best scorers in the history of basketball. Correct? Fair. I would agree. Four scoring titles. Devin Booker is one of the best scorers of the generation. Maybe he's one of the best scorers of the last five years, but not one of the best scorers in the history of basketball. Nikola Jokic is a really good player, but he's not one of the best scorers in the history of basketball. That title belongs to Kevin Durant. So if that is the case, why have I seen the highest scoring games of 50 piece from Nikola Jokic? Why have I seen a 40 piece from Devin Booker? If you are one of the greatest scorers ever in history, not today, in history, then I need you to show it. That's why I think he's let them down. Chris, thoughts? That's got to be the dumbest take I've ever heard. That's Acho. That's Acho. I, I knew it was Acho, bro. That's got to be the dumbest take. Some wow, sh- why, bro. Why, why is it dumb, though? I think, I think, I think he makes a good point. Now, most of the things he says is dumb, but like seriously, like Kevin Durant is one of the greatest scorers of all time. So why we didn't get to see that in on display in this series? I'll and, tell you exactly why. All right, I'll let you go, but I, I'll be real short. My my answer is based on what I just said before the clip. Mm-hmm. He don't have the favor no more. So he he's he's playing a different game. Like he's playing against uh the 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 type of respect Patrick Belly uh would get going to the hole. <laughs> they're they're giving they're giving that to Kevin Durant. But when Jokic goes to the hole, he's getting the Michael Jordan treatment. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to let you embarrass Jokic because we're trying to market Jokic. We're not trying to market KD, so you can do whatever you want to him. And KD, we want we want you to be able to score against that. Because uh, it started when he played against P.J. Tucker in that Milwaukee series, and they let P.J. Tucker beat the hell out of Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant still was giving them 40 and 50. Mm. So it was almost like one of those things, like, man, no matter what we do, we raise the degree of difficulty for Kevin Durant. He's still going to be able to overcome it. And it made for good TV. And that they, they, up the street, yeah, man. yeah. And they and they and they pushed that they pushed that uh, uh, that that edge against Boston, but he wasn't able to do against Boston what he get, uh, did against Milwaukee. And the same thing in this uh, playoffs, man. So anyway, that's my thoughts on it, man. Go ahead, Chris. So <clears throat> Devin Booker in one of the interviews, post game interviews, or something like that, when they asked. Uh, how does it feel like playing with KD? Like, what does it do for your offense? What does it do for your game? You know, and he said, KD being there oh, is a distraction. Up. It's it, it gives him the luxury to do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. This is why Booker has been dropping 40 pieces, 35 point games on a consistent basis. KD is not searching for the numbers this is the this is the game that we see of of kevin durant and i told somebody this when i was i was having a conversation with somebody about who's the best player in the world right now and i said that it's kd because he can score from anywhere he can play make he can defend there are very few holes in his game and he opens up the floor for everybody else right this is a prime example Katie's still going to get his regardless. He's That's why he was averaging 30 in the playoffs. He's going to get his regardless. But now him being who he is garners so much attention that it, they forget, okay, well, you have to pick your poison. It's do we want KD to go off or do we want Booker to go off? Well, we know that KD can get a 50 piece. We know that KD can go for 40 whenever. We'll take our chances on locking Booker down. And it still doesn't work because it's just two two explosive talents. But they still would rather Booker go off than KD go off. So KD still gets all that attention. It's it, but KD still was putting up thirty a game. Like 
it doesn't it doesn't matter but that's that's what he does he opens up the floor for booker to go crazy so that's why that's why katie is not getting 45 50 point games in the playoffs because he's not looking for that he's not searching for that and it's it's not for him he he's there should he, should he be searching for it when they losing though i mean we i mean we gotta be we gotta be honest he didn't look like we like we expected Kevin Durant look, man. He was he was affected by how physical uh, they was able to play, and you know, uh, of course, Denver was getting away with a lot of hand checking on him and a lot of contact and a lot of fouls. I think that's unfair, man, because they wasn't they wasn't doing it both ways like that. They wasn't they wasn't letting uh, Denver be guarded like that, especially not Jokic. They wasn't allowing that, so I think it's kind of jacked up that they did that. Um, but that's how they called the game. So I mean, like I'm thinking in my head, like. It's, it, at some point, you got to take a fine if you Monty Williams. You got to come out there. Do what Steve Kerr did. Steve Kerr, and we'll talk about this uh, in the next segment, but Steve Kerr, <laughs> he, out, he out there begging for help from the uh, referees. Oh, they're flopping and all this stuff. I'm, and the funny thing about it is Steve Kerr, the, the, the topic of conversation is the legal screens that they set for Steph and Clay. And they're saying they're flopping on our legal screens can you can you stop the flopping? Because we we want you to tell them to stop flopping, so y'all don't call our illegal screens. But we still want to be able to set illegal screens. It's just so he, but he, but he's still at least trying. You know, what I mean? he's trying to get the referee's attention, and it worked. You know, what I mean, it worked. But Monty Williams, like you got to come out there and protect your players, man. Because Kevin Durant is not going to run up in the referee's face like Draymond and tell them they're fouling me. Jokic was doing it. Mm -hmm. Jokic, every time Jokic got a foul and, uh, or got a manhandle and then get called, he was over there talking to the refs. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? so, Luka. yeah, yeah. But I mean, he do he doing it in a different way. He don't do it. He don't do it while the play's still going. But you know, he 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 go over there and do it. You know what I mean? But you know, he but knows the, he knows he's not warfare. supposed to be getting touched. Look, that's hey, look, man, he's touching me. Like you not, I'm Jokic. You're not supposed to be doing it. I'm supposed to have favor this series. You know, that, what I mean? that's that's the ball player in Kevin Durant. He's like he's not gonna allow himself to to show emotion or show that like he feels like the calls are affecting his game. Yeah, because he think he's so good and this is this is this is the flaw that I'm seeing in Kevin Durant the last couple of years. He's so good that he wants to be he 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 wants to challenge himself to be able to beat uh uh the challenge that they're giving him by saying, "Okay, we're going to we're going to allow them to foul you. Can you beat it?" So he's trying to beat that. And I know what that feels like. He's trying to beat something that most players would go and say referees call that so I can I can get my stuff off. But yeah. Kevin Durant's trying to he's trying to accept the challenge and beat that. And the other thing he's doing is his jump shot is so good that he's relying on it. What I think sometimes just go get the layup, get the contact in the in the paint, and see if you can get to the line. Mm -hmm. But you know he he's taking all that contact and say I'm still gonna rise up and pull this jump shot because I'm so good at it. So I I think he got to change his mind a little bit. Like look man, well, instead of me getting in the post and turning over this shoulder and doing this fadeaway over you, let me go ahead and just hit the up and under and see if I can get something at the rim. That's what that's why I want to see uh, Kevin Rant start doing. He got it in his game, but he's trusting the jump shot too much. I got a call on the line. Dino, what's up? Fellas, fellas, what's good? What's up? How we living? <laughs> good, man. That's what I'm going to him, brother. <laughs> what's he's okay. Okay. What's up, Dino? Around, my brother. Hey, look, man. Look, 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 look. Real talk. I agree with everything that's been said by uh, all three because I don't really think um, anybody really opposed anybody with each other's views. But real great point. That that snippet you played, who was that talking? Emmanuel, Emmanuel Ocho. Ocho. Ocho, yeah. Okay. With that, with that, um, I, I had sent in a comment. Could that have been a coaching issue? It could be. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I feel. And, I feel like I Monty could have probably seen. Said. Monty could have probably seen that Durant grabbed so much attention. Well, I have another prolific scorer. So while they while they paying attention to KD, Booker go get yours. And then once you get hot, because we saw once Booker got hot, it didn't matter who you threw at him, he was mm -hmm. still scoring. Right. Right. Now the uh, reason. Now I have something to to actually add on to that as well. Uh, uh, last time I came on the live, I remember I was, I was speaking about chemistry. Chemistry is a huge thing in the playoffs. Denver, that chemistry that Jamal Murray and Jokic, I, I think I heard one of the reporters say it during the game, like their their chemistry is similar to what Oscar Robertson and Moses Malone was doing. That that's just that chemistry, that's really tough to beat. Especially when you 
you won't have much playing time together because you got traded over here mid-season. And in, in the midst, like you said, Chris, in the midst of that, you had that freak injury. So y'all really don't have – and then, Chris Paul, you go down, which was almost pre Guaranteed. <laughs> you know what I mean? You feel me? You said guaranteed. <laughs> so it's like there's no chemistry to be built there. And the two players that was really holding Phoenix together – um, when Booker and CP wasn't, y'all traded them away. Cam Johnson and Michael Bridges. Yep. So, so now you have a team with basically no chemistry at all, no room to build chemistry going against a team that's been playing together very well for the last four years, but minus two because Jamal Murray got hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that, that, that chemistry was still there. And when Jamal Murray came back, in the beginning of the season, we've seen it. It was like they didn't lose a step. They mm-hmm. still had that chemistry. So I think that's still a, a tough task to ask of KD. Even if you go out there and ask, hey, man, we losing. I need you to score 40. Just, you know what I'm saying? That's still a tough task to do. I'm playing with a whole new group of guys. And, I mean, you have chemistry with Book from the USA team. But that's literally it. That's a tough task to ask anybody. Two men yeah. versus five, seven. That's tough to do to, for anybody. So yeah, and especially especially with uh, Monty Williams, the first two games not trusting his bench at all. I'm somebody TJ Warren, all. Terrence Rose, campaign. They didn't get in the game at all in the first game. Second game, I thought Phoenix yeah, had con- dropped thirty last night. He right? dropped thirty last night. Yeah, uh, Phoenix actually had control over the second game, and then uh, the bottom fell out uh, at some point. Denver went on a, a, a run, but um, I, I think that was. That was a little bit of coaching, but uh, also a little bit of uh, hands off the merchandise. Like th- this whole series right. for me boiled down to: Are you gonna let us? Are you gonna allow us to beat Jokic up the way you're allowing us to uh, beat up Kevin Durant? Mm. And the answer to that was no. We're gonna we're gonna let we're gonna let Bruce Brown, Aaron Gordon, uh, even the rookie uh, Christian Braun. Uh, it don't matter who guard Kevin Durant. We're gonna allow them maximal contact. And Kevin mm-hmm. Durant hasn't figured it out. But when you guard Jokic, you got to guard him honest and do the best you can because we're not going to allow you to beat him up. Draymond Green beat him up last year in the uh, Warriors series. And, mm-hmm. and they allowed it, and the Warriors beat them pretty easily. So the the, the series for me really boiled down to, you know, hands off the merchandise uh, 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 approach to Jokic, but not to the stars on the finish side. Can I say something real quick? Um... The Suns owner is an idiot. <laughs> if I'm oh, him, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm him, I'm crying. I'm begging for a suspension. I'm going in for all of that. Of you know, you know what one game suspension would have did for the Suns? Oh, it would have done, done wonders. It would have won in them series. It was, he, I, didn't, if, he, didn't, he didn't play. He didn't play it well. No, I, he Mark, did not. Mark Cuban would have done it. Mark, oh, Mark Cuban, Cuban would have sold it. Mark <laughs> Cuban would have sold it. That's 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 just when you are honest, man. They the man. They, it bites you. It bites you in the ass sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you gotta have that doggy, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, hey. He, 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 he showed a little bit when he flopped. Come on, he showed a little bit when he flopped, man. Bro. <laughs> NBA is not built off of honesty, yeah, bro. I, I he, don't know that. I don't feel been in a hot seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I came in with a neck brace on. I oh. came in with a wheelchair. Oh, yeah. I, hey, I would have sent Adam. I would have sent Adam Silver some some fabricated Photoshop X rays of a bruised sternum. <laughs> <laughs> For I'm, sure. like, I'm like either he gets suspended or I press charges. What you want to do? <laughs> yeah, but he should. You know, he he think, should have milked it for sure. He should have milked absolutely, it. Absolutely, man. I but think, I mean, I, mean, I respect even honesty, if he man. Does milk it, right? Even if he does milk it, it's kind of similar to what you said about um, Draymond. No, when they making these, when they looking to make these decisions, they 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 try and look back at okay, is this a habit or? Is this just heat of the moment type of the deal? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I, like, I, I, I think that only has one out of character major thing that you don't do, and that was the, the when he pushed uh, Marcus yeah. Morris in the back. No, no, nah, nah, he, he got he got something else against uh, campaign uh, year before last or last year too. 
but uh, that's but, that's, but, that's like but, player but, on player though. But yeah, that's player on player. Once you yeah. go player to fan, all that immediately goes out the window. Yeah, yeah. You're not looking at history oh, yeah. when it's player to fan. Well, you look, you're, you're looking yeah. at the precedence yeah. that was set by Malice in the Palace. You you immediately connected to Malice in the Palace because that's, that's yep. what we're trying to prevent. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So so if if that fan had not have been the same owner and that fan had been someone that was just a regular fan and his family was there so just, just 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 like when Jokic brothers was in the audience and the security had to uh, stop them from coming on the court when when he when when he pushed Morris all right that that could have been easily the same thing if Jokic had pushed a fan and they had their whole family members right there they could have mm-hmm. they, they could have turned into a fight so mm-hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? So the whole point, the whole point of uh of putting those rules in place that players can't go in the fan was to protect the fans and protect the player. And they threw that all out the window and was thinking about uh the repercussions that would happen if we uh suspend Jokic and Denver loses this series. They didn't want that heat. They didn't want they didn't want another series saying that it was rigged because we suspended a star player. Do we see uh Denver and Philly? Cooking up here? Is that a good? Is that a good money move? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Lamar answer that. Lamar, so Lamar, so put it, put it think of it this way: If you're the NBA commissioner and you want to sell a fight, uh, do you think the NBA versus jo- uh, Jokic uh, battle would would be great, or do you think uh, a Boston Celtics LA battle they both going for banner number eighteen? Do you think that'd be great, or do you think a LeBron yeah. Uh, the bubble rematch. The bubble rematch. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. A LeBron <laughs> Heat or or a rematch of Warriors. Um, um, uh, Celtics. Like, what, I mean, what do you want? He, he, to be honest, you you got a lot of variables that can actually make a lot of sense money wise for the bottom line of the NBA. Uh, you know, Warriors in there always draws money. LeBron in there always draws money. LeBron versus Celtics were drawing money because of Lakers Celtics history. But to me, because you look at uh MB got snuffed as MVP the last two years, gets it this year. Jokic got it the last two. A lot of people saying it's voter uh uh fatigue, uh right. that MB got it and and you know, there's a backstory for it. So you can take all those last three years, you can you can package that for like almost like a Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury fight with Jokic and 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 Embiid. Uh so you know that's actually kind of been a matchup lately that I've been I've been thinking that the NBA would try to formulate and find a way to, to get. Um Philly kind of dropped the bag last night, uh shitting at home. I mean, that was yeah, yeah, they did. They did correct. absolutely. Um, uh, but you know, to to me, honestly, I think that's the matchup that uh, Adam Silver in front office uh, uh, in New York is probably cooking up, as in how they're going to sell this. You know, last two MVPs, uh, you know, top two candidates of MVP the last three years, they can easily, um, you know, WWE market this up easily. With that. <laughs> I I disagree. Okay. I don't. I don't think that we will ever see a Jokic Embiid finals. Just for the simple fact, we've seen that already, and Embiid whoops Jokic ass every time. <laughs> every time. But we didn't see that in the seven game series though. And no, yeah, 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 yeah. We ain't seen no seven. We ain't <laughs> seen in no seven game series after uh, uh, they say Kendrick Perkins split the room uh mm-hmm. with black and white and then mm-hmm. Kendrick Perkins and JJ Reddick went at it and then NB won the MVP and then people think Joker should have got it. Yeah, I I, I mean it, yeah. it it almost be the the modern day Larry Bird Magic Johnson. That's you another know, factor uh, what, that, that yeah. you can add into that. That's a great point. That's a great point. So I feel like it I have a couple I this is for one one of the times that I can't really call it. It's a lot of up in the airs, you know, like with the teams that's left, right? Um I will say if Golden State wins tonight, they're gonna go to the finals. Um, mm. To be able to, if they pull this one out the fire, I, I, I just I feel like that. I feel like they will. I feel like AD, they've been saying that he's okay, he's good, but that was a mean shot. He got wheeled out in the wheelchair. Mm. Like <laughs> you might have avoided concussion protocol, but like dudes effed up. So, and they'll probably let Draymond get a little more handsy a little more active but uh this is 
like to do a three one on LeBron when LeBron did a three one on you, I think that that's like must see. So TV. many story, so many storylines. Oh it's, man, it's so many storylines, bro. I, I like bro. that though. Yeah, it's like it, it's like it's like the way but they set very, the, the way the league the, the way the league set up these stories. It's almost like Thanksgiving, man. You cook all of this stuff, <laughs> and then and then you you're able to let's see how long we can eat off this. You know, can we go one week? Can we go two weeks? Like, how long is that turkey gonna be? You get what I'm saying? So, turkey, the, yeah, it's it's, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, so 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 their their job in the media is to build storylines up so much, and it has so much drama and tension and 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 discontent in there to where they actually explode. There's Thanksgiving, man. We can eat on this all summer, mm. talking about this three one comeback. Uh, the revenge three one comeback. The Warriors got on uh, LeBron, and you, I mean, and then oh man, what does this do to LeBron's legacy? I mean, you can talk about that all what does summer. It do to Steph's legacy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So 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 Ooh. like so, which one of these is going to be a Thanksgiving feast? I do have um, a question though. Um, with say okay, Golden State wins tonight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they won't. But go ahead. I, I mean, you got to think, man. The Lakers are banged up bad, man. Bron rolled the left ankle this time instead of the right after already trying to just get back off the right. You know what I mean? Now the left ankle. So if Golden State wins tonight, that's going to be a tough game seven for the Lakers. So, Chris, you might be right. They, yeah. they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll pull that through. So, so exactly. yeah, you, 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 you right. They, they, they might win because I. This is what I thought uh, for real, for real with both of these game sixes uh, and the, even the game five. I, I knew, um, I had, I, I was ninety percent, maybe ninety five percent sure that Denver was supposed to win that series. They wanted Denver to advance, and in that mm-hmm. case, when they want a team to win, they're not going to mm-hmm. let it go to seven, right? They're not going to let it go to seven because anything can happen in that seven game. So. I was gonna say the same. They got the yeah. they got the Denver series over in six. Now with this Golden State and LA thing, what I think they want is to get the most games out of this as possible. So I can see this going seven. And I still wouldn't know who they want to advance. I just know they wanted seven games out of this. And anything can happen. You know, you get what I'm saying? So I I I, right. I, I I'm 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 with you, uh Chris. If they win, if if the Lakers don't win it tonight, they might be in some trouble. Um I, I wanna they, say like I think the leagues. I think the league seen, the finals, really. I think the I think the league yeah. seen what Seth did in Game Seven against Sacramento, and they want to see if you can put, you know, which they cheated Sacramento. They, they shouldn't win seven games either. <laughs> they shouldn't have won seven games either. Hey, let, since Man, we are, since want, we already own them, them the since we already I, own them, we already own the Lakers. Let's let's go ahead and move the Lakers Warriors right. And, I want Seth in the finals to play against the Heat. The Heat would have beat them last year, and I feel like they could beat them again this year. I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want the Warriors to get nobody who missing players, uh, <laughs> and, get, and give them no easy ring. I don't, I don't want that, man. Um, I, you know, you know, I want somebody. That, you know, I want to, I want to see somebody that was e- evenly as match as uh, Boston was last year, but I want to see a ref in a way with a with a hundred percent the players are making the decision who who who's gonna be the champion, and, and it's not. Slide it for our entertainment. I, well, I, I don't like that. Well, make but sure we, Scott we, Foster ain't in the finals. <laughs> make sure what? Make sure Scott Foster ain't ref in the finals. Oh man, he gonna be there. Oh but, man, he, he's refing. He's refing. He's refing our games tonight. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good, good, no, good luck hey, I, I will tell you this though. I was because Game Six is back in Miami, right? Yeah. Y'all gonna win tonight? Y'all bouncing the Knicks tonight? Scott Foster is is the ultimate extender though. They they put him That's on series, they put, they put him on games life. where it's supposed to extend and go to a game seven. He is exactly. the Cinderella. He is the Cinderella story. They're not going to pass on this opportunity for them to advance to the conference finals at home. Doubt it. Doubt it. So it, well, I'm not saying that. I'm I'm just I'm I'm just saying the Heat might win, but it, it, they go have to win in game seven in New York. Mm-hmm. But to to this Lakers Warriors uh, know, situation, uh, Lakers yeah, Warriors situation, real quick, Morris. Um, oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, you, you know, you kind of spoke about uh, some of the things that's going on ahead of this game six. AD had that head injury, and I think another thing that kind of changed uh, the series a little bit is Kerr complaining in public about uh, the quote unquote flops from the Lakers players. Um, and it seemed like the referees heard it, and it seemed like the referees, you know, is is kind of 
changing the way they call it. You know, the the the, the free throws was much even last night. The fouls was much even, and uh, they didn't call that many illegal screens on the uh, uh, on the on the Warriors and all that stuff. So, what do you see having more of a factor in the game six? AD's injury or this flop narrative that's out there that's kind of influencing the referees? Plot twist. It's Andrew Wiggins with a fractured rib. Okay. I don't know how he got a fractured rib, but it, reports came out that he does have a fractured rib and he's questionable to play. Um, I think that's huge if he don't play. That's huge. I forgot about that. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I forgot that all means, about that. That means that means you got to. That means you're asking for Clay to Clay to step back up. You got to put Kaminga in the lineup. Uh, Jordan yeah. Poole has to play defense now. Man, Jordan Poole has just has to play basketball because he's been <laughs> hot garbage. Wait, wait, playoff. wait. He wasn't suspended. He wasn't suspended or nothing. Who? Jordan Poole. No, suspended for what? He was on the court. <laughs> he, he been on the court. <laughs> no, nah, he did. He's he been hey, too busy. Call him out, man. Cut him some he, slack, he, man. He been he too busy. Call him out. Hey, man. Call him out. Hey, man. Call him out. Check me out, right? Check me out. And I said this last year, too. Check me out. Got this man get paid all away. his bread. This get this this man get paid all his bread. One, I don't think if you're not a two way, you shouldn't be getting paid that much bread. That's just my opinion. But you you get paid all of this money to be exactly what the Warriors were missing. The, the that third scorer, you know what I mean, and. We ain't seen you since last year. We haven't that's seen not, you that's before. Not, you that's not your true. Check. That's not true. That is true. That's not true. So first, first and for, first of all. Jordan Poole was there all last season. He showed up from the beginning of the season all the way through the playoffs, and they needed him. Mm-hmm. Clay was okay, not Clay was season. not Clay last year mm-hmm. or in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry got hurt in the what first and second round, and Clay had uh, and 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 Poole carried the Warriors. So that's what uh, Jordan Poole looks like when he has the opportunity and the space to be Jordan Poole. What's going on right now? Is that now that Poole has got paid and got that money, the jealousy has set in for Clay because look, you you just paid my replacement, mm. and, I'm, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm and I'm going I'm going to show you that you paid the wrong guy. You should have held that money and saved it for me, right? So I want a max contract extension. I probably ain't go get it because that dude, even though I want to win, I also want to show you that I'm the guy, not him. And Draymond is on the same time. Like, well, I know my contract's coming up. And you just gave the money I'm asking for the pool, and I'm going to show you he's not the guy either. They 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 have always uh, tried to reiterate the point that the core three of Pool, uh, I'm not Pool, but uh, Clay, Draymond, and Steph is all the Warriors need. That's the point they made to Kevin Durant. You will be. We don't need you. We won without you, and that's the point they're trying to make with Jordan Pool. So. His but struggle. they need Jordan Poole, though. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but e- ego is a powerful drug, and they and it seems like I they're re- they're they they're rather uh, put the pressure on Jordan Poole, and you figure it out. Oh, we want to ring without Jordan Poole. We don't care about Jordan Poole. Like, if you tell KD that, and you run KD out of town, what you think they gonna do to Jordan Poole? Yeah, but he just got paid. But the difference, is, the difference is KD didn't get paid. Yeah. I, I, I paid this guy Jordan Poole. Yeah, but they was That's about the to pay difference. Kevin Durant if he wanted it. He left. And help Draymond get paid. If if KD would have stayed, I, I, Draymond wouldn't have got no money. I hear what you're saying, though. But look, look, let me tell you, the dynamic is and, completely and, and, different. And, and, that, that's, and that's why Draymond is sucking on that clutch sport glass dick so much because <laughs> clutch sports and LeBron James is is what negotiated his contract with the Warriors and got him paid. And he owes he owes all of it to LeBron. That, that man do be loving him some, on, some LeBron off court. Yeah, <laughs> that's Dookie hey, love. That man, dude, we loving him some LeBron off court. Yeah, that's what that is. Invited him to his wedding and everything. But check me, though. Everything changed because we're talking about somebody who they were about to pay versus somebody they already paid. So it's already set in stone. You the guy. You here. That's the message with that, with that, that, that paycheck. Right. And his his teammates are trying to show the front office they're wrong. Even Steve Kerr is a coach. Cause Steve Kerr didn't make that decision to pay Jordan Poole. That's uh, that's Bob Myers and the owner and, right. Joe, and Joe Lacob. So it's almost like Steve Kerr and and uh, Steph Clay and Draymond are trying to show you you made a mistake and paid Poole, and we'll, we'll rather push him out and prove it to you. 
So he's fighting against okay, that. So he's not fighting up against just the defense that he's playing against uh, in, in the opposing defense. He's also fighting against his coach and his uh, teammates don't really want him there no more. Hmm. Okay, so with, with that, with them paying him, how do you get rid of that? Do you just take that hit and release him? Or who's no, you tra- no, you, no, you trade him. You would him. have to trade him. There's... You trade him. But what you... I'm asking, though, who's willing to pick? That was a major contract. Oh, a lot of teams will pick him up. Weak. Jordan Poole is a baller. A lot one... of people will pick Jordan Poole up. And 130 is light compared to what these super maxes are. Yeah, I would pick Jordan. Phoenix, I, I, would, I, I would pick Phoenix. Jordan Poole up right now before I pick up Clay. Phoenix, mm. if I'm Phoenix, I'll go for him. Phoenix no, has no, no money. Wouldn't. Phoenix has no money. I wouldn't. Uh, what, what? They will after this year. They will after this year. Aiton is not going to be there, and Chris Paul. I don't really. I, I don't really think he's going to be there. Yeah, but okay, um, okay. So look, look at it this especially way. Especially if you bring Jordan Poole in. A little. Look at it this way, uh, more. Uh, Aiden just got paid, and I think CP3 got one or two more years on his contract where he's making a buttload of money. Do you think it's easier for Phoenix to move both those contracts than it is for Golden State to move Jordan Poole's contract? No, okay, so that's what I'm saying. They don't have a problem with moving Jordan Poole, they will move him. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's probably part of the reason why they signed him because they knew if they didn't sign him he would have walked in free agency this year so they signed him and, and was like all right man we only signed him for one year because we're trading before it's time for us to pay uh clay and draymond and i think that's what's going to happen the writing is on the wall they're going to trade you jordan Poole. State, man. We, yeah but 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 look look at how we're talking about jordan Poole now we're talking about him not showing up and and draymond and clay made sure that that's how we see it so it's easily it can be easily sold in the media and to the fans that Golden State can do this without Poole. We need we'll, we'll rather have Draymond and Clay than Poole. What I'm saying, let's just be honest about the Warriors. You got players on, on the roster that just can't deal with the fact that, you know, dynasties don't last forever. You got to, right. at some point, you, you either, you know, cats, either body's not, you know, letting them produce like they used to, or it's just time to move on. And right. to me, it, I think, I just think it's, I just think the Warriors are hitting that that end of the road. And let's be honest, we know for a fact that Steph is the only piece that you don't move. Yeah. They go get caught with that hot potato in their hand when it's time to say hot potato. And that hot potato is going to be a, a huge Draymond contract, a huge clay contract. You're not going to be able to get rid of it, and you're not going to have their replacement in the building. They they, they brought in Wiseman, Poole, and Bro. Moody. And Kaminga to be able hey. to be the new the new movement with Steph moving forward. Now, you can't anybody that knows basketball can 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 disagree with this. You can't tell me that you couldn't find a way as Steve Kerr as a as a basketball IQ that you have, and you've shown that you can be a good coach. You can't tell me you couldn't find a way to use James Wiseman in this series right now. That like to me that was the, like come on you talking about a dude that's seven foot one athletic as hell you bro he he could have shut down the paint and he still could have contributed on the offensive side dog yeah. if they had him in this series this series don't even probably go past five and that's maybe on not maybe not I, I tell you I tell you what man I I <laughs> it seemed like uh, Bob Myers was trying to. Uh, continue this dynasty on with Steph and the new guys and he was going to move on from Dre and Clay. and once Dre and Clay caught wind of that they went into whatever mode they went into where they were saying that we're going to make sure we stay together and and it's working because they, they changed their mind on Wiseman real quick and, and, and I'm going to tell you they brought Wiseman in he had a good rookie season with Steph before Steph got hurt, and then Wiseman ended up getting hurt. And in the second year, I think he was kind of, kind of injured. And he, you know, but he was he was progressing and, and doing good. I didn't see no problem with Wiseman. No, nah, he was actually doing great. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was doing real good. What ended up happening is I I think, <laughs> and, and and y'all can laugh at me if y'all want to, but I think Dre and Clay was so jealous that they seen the new their their replacements that they started brainwashing Steve Kerr to make it seem like these guys was a problem and they and, and, and they couldn't fit in because they chose Looney over uh Wiseman and and what it looked like was that Wiseman was too uh offensively gifted and he wanted more offense uh, uh to come his to way, right <laughs> and I think Kerr was telling him look we don't operate like that 
Yeah. You you have to play like Loney. I want you to get nothing but offensive rebounds and play defense. And when you get off a re- rebound, you need to find Steph. Yeah, but his talent is almost better than Looney. So like that's to me that was suppressing his 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 talent. That was suppressing. He was overqualified. Yeah, he was, he was definitely qualified for the job as yeah. a center. I mean, come on, Zaza uh, was Zaza Pachulia. He, he was a center. Uh, Looney, Bogut, Bogut, Bogut. McGee. I mean, yeah. you talk about. Yeah, dudes that's just there to just rebound and protect the rim. And that's the problem. Was, he was so much more than that. And that, yeah, I just, I just think that was a, a foolish move. I mean, look at this, for instance. Look at the Patriots dynasty. You got the constant that was Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. That would be yeah. Steph Curry in this situation. All right. Yeah. So you look at the constant that was there for the whole dynasty, they won throughout. But around him, it was forever changing with the Patriots. You saw all kind of cats that had no business getting Super Bowl rings. They hop on the train, they get a ring. Like Subway thing, employees. Bro, it, it, it really didn't matter because you had the constant that was Tom Brady and Belichick. You know for a fact the constant in Golden State is, is Chef Curry. All right? He's yeah. going to be in there cooking. So you can interchange all your other pieces of that dynasty, but you keep trying to hold on to what got you in 2015, 2017, 18. I know you got the ring last year, but quite let's be honest, some of your role was was favorable to get there. Some of your so, you, you got so some what happened, injuries. So what happened with that analogy when when Tom Brady finds his favorite target in Grunk and and they become a uh a, a package deal and you can't get rid of Grunk without getting rid of Tom Brady. Is, isn't that what Clay and Dre is to Steph? <sighs> So they in a dilemma. They in a dilemma, man. They in the, they 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 in the, they got themselves in the pickle, and they, and and they the, unfortunately the fate of what happened to Wiseman this year in that trade is going to happen to Kaminga and Poole. They're going to get rid of both of them dudes. And I think it'd be a bad mistake. Yeah, Chris, Game Six. The you you, you said the flop narrative is not going to be a big deal. No, it's going to be well. It it might be like a side deal but it's really because they i just got a update uh wiggins is going through gonna go he's gonna go through a pre-game warm-up and he's a game time decision if you wow. don't have if you don't have wig like that's that's requiring clay is gonna have to be game six clay steph is gonna have to be game seven steph and and draymond is gonna have to be draymond from 2016 because and what, and what the rest got to do let it happen. <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> you gotta let them boys play. Do y'all do y'all see it? Do y'all see any hands off the merchandise action going on tonight? Or do y'all oh, no. think it's Draymond gonna be Green? No Draymond, ball? Draymond Green is in AD's jersey all hey, night. J- Draymond Green about to he, he's about to go psych himself up. He about to go put on his WWE war paint. He's about to go. Yeah, yeah. you know he about to get ready. Yeah, he 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 getting ready right now. Speaking of Draymond Green, though, uh, I got I I want I want I want y'all to hear what he said about uh, Stephen A. Smith and the TNT crew laughing at uh, Anthony Davis' head injury and the fact that he was in the wheelchair and all this stuff. Uh, he he kind of said something I agree with, man. I want to see what y'all think about it. Here's Draymond. Just don't play with those head injuries, man. They're they're serious. I saw a lot of people laughing and talk like. But it's a hit to the head. And like one small hit to the head can change everything in your life. So I don't really understand the, the joke. Um, I don't understand it at all. It's every time you step out on the basketball court, the football field, the hockey, uh, on the ice, on the pitch, you're risking your life because one injury can change everything. You know, we saw um, in not this past World Cup, but the World Cup before, Neymar had an injury to his back that almost paralyzed him. That was a couple of centimeters away from paralyzing him. And so, you know, I, I don't quite understand the laughing. Why it's so funny that a guy gets hit in the head. Like, the smallest hit to the wrong part of the head can change your life. I, I kind of agree with that. I, I thought it was bad taste for them to even have a joke about it. I get I get that a- Anthony Davis is injury prone, mm-hmm. right? But I, I even even with him just being injury prone, I didn't see it as funny. Like I you know I um uh, uh, you know I, I I don't like laughing at people misfortune. Like when it first started happening, then you know it was a cooler joke 
But once it once it becomes like a, a like an issue and I have no control over it, you, you, yeah. you get what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a big guy. I hit the floor a lot, and I'm 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 probably I'm just built in a way that I sustain injuries uh, easier than the next man. Like you, I mean, you don't laugh at a guy just because that happened. Everybody not built Mississippi tough and Alabama tough and all that stuff. Every, you know, everybody ain't got those big Shaq African bones like. You get what I'm saying? Like you, sometimes you gotta chill, and, it's, and on national TV, when you got millions of people watching you, and you got and you got that type of voice, I think you gotta be real careful, especially when you're supposed to be like a big brother in the NBA fraternity. Like, come on, man! Like you, That's you seen you seen how that affected Javale McGee when he was the butt of the jokes all the time, and, and he said they will bring up Shaq and the fool in contract negotiations. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like you got you, you, you got to be better than that. Yeah, you got to be better than that, man. And the way they was laughing. Uh, and and uh, the the way that people you know some people thought that the joke was funny on TNT, I just knew Stephen A. Smith would go capitalize on it. So he tried to do his own version of it the next morning, and he went off on AD as well in a joking matter. He had to come back and apologize on Twitter. But I mean, it's just it's just it's just bad taste, man. What y'all thoughts on it? No, no, you. I I feel like. Like, I, I agree with Draymond. Anytime there's an injury, I don't... And I think, now we spoke about this with the Ben Simmons situation. Yeah. Anytime there's a, it's an injury, I think we should respect the player, respect the athlete. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't joke about it because it's, it's true. These yeah. guys, I think, I think a lot of people forget because we see them so often on TV, we forget that these guys got lives outside of this. These yeah. guys got to... You know what I'm saying? They got to go home be, uh, to their families, be fathers. And you know what I'm saying? They, they got to do that. So if if I'm taking all of this injury and stuff for literally for some people do it for the love of the game. Some people do it for the fans. Some people do it for both. Like if I'm if I'm doing all of this on the court, you know what I'm saying? Busting my eyes. Listen, I get like you said, I get it. I get hurt a lot. A lot of people say I'm weak. I'm frail, whatever. But the thing with AD and, this, and I'm into this as well. Like this is this is this guy is a point guard who grew overnight, literally. Right. right. You know what I mean. So his body is never going to be able to catch up because he's putting so much stress in it, having to work out every other every day, four, three, or four times a day. Like, nah, man, that's, it, it's not cool. I don't think it's ever cool to mimic or mock any injury, whether it's a foot sprain or. Or in this case, a head injury. Yeah. So, I, especially I think we not, do need to especially be a not no, es- look, especially not no head injury, man. Any, any, exactly any anytime no you get hit in the head that hard and you lose consciousness, even for a second, they they diagnose that as a traumatic brain injury. That's a TBI. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking, uh, I, you know, I'm a football player. I've had a concussion, and yeah. you know, I still see things to this day. Yeah. And, that, and and that and, and so they say that, yeah you know I mean? so and, I understand yeah and concussions and TBIs they say some uh, most of the times the effects of it don't even show up for years mm-hmm. years you get what I'm saying long. so you you got you got to think about the the head injuries and the head hits that Muhammad Ali might have took and then all of a sudden you know he ended up the way he was you don't know if 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 that has to do with his boxing career or not you you get what I'm saying so. I, have you guys ever had a concussion or a head injury? I have. I I, I had a TBI. And look, and and, right, so and, and remember, not not, not only that. The first thing they told you after they diagnosed you that no bright light, no yeah. no electronics and stuff like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Where in the midst of his and his situation, I'm surrounded by bright light flashes and stuff because of uh, how many people it is. You know what I mean? That yeah. man. That's a serious thing, man. It is, and look, and I, I say this, and I, I I give Lamar and Chris the floor real quick, but I say this: the the even if they say I'm not laughing at the head injury, I'm laughing at the fact that he was dramatically in a wheelchair. If a doctor tells you get in a wheelchair, because I I you know uh, I mean we got a player like Chris Boss who who uh, lost his career because of blood clots, and I know about that because I had blood clots before, and when I went mm-hmm. to the hospital for my clot, it, it immediately when I told them. I may have a a, a a clot in my leg. They put me in a wheelchair. They don't want you to walk because uh, the clot could move. Mm-hmm. Hey, don't walk. Don't mm-hmm. don't do anything. Get in this wheelchair. And I was mm-hmm. like, I can walk. Why I gotta get in a wheelchair? So if a doctor tells you get in a wheelchair, it's for a reason. You get it. You get your ass in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So we don't we don't know why they put him in a wheelchair. They as soon as he said I'm dizzy, I'm you know he kept looking up you know trying to you know trying to catch his composure, but he was dizzy. 
if, yeah. if you get Avoid hit in the head, the box if, the yeah, imagine that if you get hit in the head and you can't you can't shake the cobwebs. The dizziness never go away. Well, well, they they put him in a wheelchair because they put him in a wheelchair because uh, when you have a, a head injury like that, they they don't want you to fall and, and exactly. make it worse. Mm-hmm. And exactly. He also, he also wasn't true. walking straight. Yeah, yeah. No. And and he that's that's, that's, that's either, not that, funny. That, that, that's a long fall for for AD. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, he's and it's not funny. Mm-hmm. It's not funny. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead, Lamar, Chris. I, no, I, no, I'm it's it's, it's it's not funny uh, when it comes to the head, and, and I understand uh, where where they was making the joke at, and you know, I I had to uh, you know reverse my track on it because I I was like, yo, they clowning, and I'm like, you know, and but to a certain degree, it's not funny. So I was like, oh, okay. Then I had to realize the severity of the injury. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa. So I was like, yo, my bad, because you know, I'm like, yo, that's not even funny. But um, you know, because you don't you don't want to play with the head. It's a very you know it's a sensitive uh, muscle uh, when it comes to injuries, uh, and you know, and once you pretty much get one concussion, it pretty much opens you up to easily get more. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's why you see Tua having the situation he's having, um, and me personally, that's I think. He's um, but you know, that's that's another show, another time. But um, you know. You, just to play devil's advocate, we, we kind of got to, you know, look at the source of this quote. Um, no disrespect, but like Draymond, like, I know you you do bring up serious points, but I'm pretty sure you you might have caused an injury or two the way that you play. Um, you know, probably hit somebody. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that you probably put an elbow in somebody's head area before. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and and so I sometimes... Uh, you just got to look at the the source of, of where the the quote is coming from, and not saying he's wrong because he's not because it, w- it it wasn't funny, and you can't play about the head. But it's like you know, Draymond, just some of your antics, man. Like you, like we just saw you stomp a dude out a couple couple of weeks ago, and what if you cracked his rib and punched your lungs? So it's like it's kind of I I agree with that, Lamar. I do like, agree with that. That's like a that's like yeah. a preacher trying to justify prostitution, like exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You yeah, know, I get that. I get that. Like, like, yeah. like, 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 how the hell you a preacher saying, you know, leave, leave them uh, concubines alone, but you know, you up in the, uh, you know, <laughs> doing your thing on, on red light district. You know, it's, it's just to me. Right, right. I get it's, that. Absolutely. It's, it's very yeah. contradictory of, of him for for him to come to from Draymond and just a little bit. But go ahead, Chris. So, uh, I don't know if y'all saw. It. There's a video that's been going around. Uh, it was this this young boxer who was kind of promising, and you know, was was trying to do his thing, and mm. in exactly. that world. And uh, the story goes that you know he started boxing so that way he could take care of his family. He got hit with one illegal shot, and he's only. Now- I don't, even, I don't even think it was illegal, bro. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't even think it was illegal. I, I think it was. I think yeah. it was. Back, I think it was to the back of the head. I think it was. I think it was. I think it might have been accidental. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during the split up, they they had wrapped up, and during them, you know how yeah. to wrap up. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So he took he took an accidental illegal shot to the back of the head, and now he's mentally disabled. Mm-hmm. And it was like he he started boxing to take care of his family, and now his family has to take care of him. That's one shot. Now I understand boxing is a little bit more than basketball. But it's the same. It's the same tale. It's a it's a shot to the head, and a mm-hmm. pointy elbow to a temple can ruin your life. Yep. And yeah, yeah. Like like Dennis said, any injury you shouldn't play with. You shouldn't joke about. Yeah, we laugh that you know AD is injury prone. It's funny comic mm-hmm. material because you know he yeah, goes up for old job. by it now. Yeah, he, so yeah old it's, it's old yeah. man. It, I mean, like they these dudes got no talent if they think they got to capitalize on that every single time. Man. Yeah, like, exactly. Shaq and Charles Barkley are some hating dudes, <laughs> man. That, look, every, every every time every look, I play Dame Lillard diss track on Shaq almost every morning. Just, just I mean, it just makes me feel right. It it, it, it it just balances the world, man. When he say, "Man, you big man hating, mad at my existence," like I, I love when Dame Lillard said all that stuff, man. He he, I mean, he he pretty much laid Shaq out. He read him pretty good. Yeah, but. <laughs> You you can't head injuries. It can change you from being a superstar to a vegetable, uh, a vegetable wheelchair yeah. bound, 
relying yeah. on other people who can't even wipe yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for Shaq and Charles to actually, I feel I, Charles has a list from all the it, from all the shots that he took. Charles Charles is not the, the sharpest knife in the in the box because all the shots that he took. No, nah, that came from Alabama. That they ain't had nothing. <laughs> no, nah, I've I've heard Charles. I've heard Charles back in his playing days. When you listen to Charles now, I'm sorry, man. That, that, that's just, that came from eating all that red clay, man. That's that's, that's yeah. But to, 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 to come from that era, that physical era, you, if you, have, you, you ever seen you ever seen Kenny walk to the to the board? Oh, he looked like Bambi. You man, Kenny. So he, <laughs> he not lying. What next? No, next TNT. Watch Kenny go to the board at halftime. His his knees doing more knocking than cops at the door with a warrant. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but nah, you ever seen nah, you ever nah, seen nah, M- nah, you ever seen nah, MJ's nah. fingers? Look at them, MJ's hey, fingers. Them, the, how close his knees is, man. They act as a chastity belt. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ain't no way you get between them thighs, baby. Hey, 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 hey! You see me doing this? <laughs> He right. doing more. He right. doing more. Me knocking in the girls at freak Nick, bro. Man, <laughs> an intense <But> role. <laughs> I was watching. I was watching the last dance, and I was watching the last dance, and Michael be talking, and he, you know he'll be using his hands, and his <laughs> middle finger, his middle and ring fingers is throwing up gang signs. Yeah, yeah, that's, they, they're and, definitely doing that. Like, you, so you have these these lifelong injuries. How can you laugh about yeah. somebody taking a, a shot to the head? Couldn't it's, walk it's, straight. He did. It's, it's jealousy, man. They, 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 they see them contracts these boys signing, man, and they see all the stuff they had to go through, and they be like, man, dang, they ain't even wait. They ain't even playing eighty two games, and they getting this much money, or, or, uh, oh, man, they not even a, uh the superstar, and they ain't go through the same scrutiny I went to, and they getting this much money. It, so it's a lot of jealousy there, man. They gotta let you know that wait. Go, I, man. I, 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 I definitely, while we still here on the lake, I just thought about something. Um. Yeah, I, li- I like the Lakers. I like the Lakers to close it out. Lonnie Walker. Uh, that was a forgot about gem that I I was speaking to my um sister about because she was a Spurs fan. And when they got rid of him, I was mm-hmm. like, no, 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 that's the one you keep. You keep him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but, they got they got rid of him and Murray to do them a that, favor. Lonnie Walker is is he's good. Like he's real good. Lonnie Walker, could, he, he 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 would be a target of mine if I was Phoenix and I didn't mm. get Kyrie, or even if I did get Kyrie, Lonnie Walker would be a, a target to be my backup. Man, he's like he's really good. Like he's very gifted. I was uh, watching them in San, San Antonio play. Yeah, like the guy, the guy can create. Yeah, but he could create a play for anybody on the court. Yep. the guy plays excellent on ball defense. Yep. He has that lengthy frame, man. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, I like the Lakers. My bad. That was just a random thought. Yeah, I was just, I was just here listening, and I just, I don't know why that popped in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, still got I, the Warriors. So, from there. so who, who y'all think? Uh, which side of y'all on with the illegal screen flopping uh, fiasco? Like, which, which, which side do y'all think? Is? Um, I the the Warriors still do set illegal screens. That's just what their game is built off of. But go get somebody that can set screens for, hold on, for LeBron. Screen. For LeBron <laughs> to come out and say what he said was a crock of shit. <laughs> well, I mean, what what he was he was factual when he said we don't practice. This is not we don't teach flopping. That's true. That's a true statement. Now him saying that actually no team I've ever been on uh, uh, teach flopping. I believe that too. Nobody's teaching them to flop. So he was factual with, with what he said. No, but, LeBron's uh, teaching him. What you talking about? Man, talking thank, about. You. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will say this though. I will say this though. When when Dennis Schroeder uh said, you know, um they're setting illegal screens, and if I don't show them that they're setting an illegal screen, they're not gonna call it. So he basically said, Yeah, I'm flopping, but what I'm doing is I'm reacting to an illegal screen. And we just talked about Kevin Durant and the uh, fouls that they're giving him. He's trying to challenge himself to play through it and still score. Where well, he probably could be trying to flop and, and show them that they're fouling him. 
I, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, 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 a catch 22. Like, which way do you go? Do you want to show them what they're doing illegal or do you just want to challenge yourself to uh, uh, play through it? And I, w- I definitely wouldn't play through illegal screens from Golden State because they're illegal screen. You for four straight quarters, ain't nothing you can do. Yeah, that, yeah. So I'm not, yeah, I, I, I'm fighting that battle with Steve Kerr and the media and I'm trying to get the referees to see it my way. But I think, I think they lean more toward the Warriors last game. Uh, with the flops, I I think it'll 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 tell you how they reference it in the first five minutes, how they're going to reference it, and and hopefully that it's consistent throughout the uh, whole game. But that to to me, because um, I mean, soon as go to state gets the ball, they're going they're going to start setting screens anyway. So um, yeah, it's it's do you fight through it? Try to you know. Show it. I mean, but look, let's be honest. When when you know that you play the Warriors, you're gonna you're gonna have to deal with those screens. And so it's it's that's on tape. Yeah, that's that's just on tape. You you you're gonna see it and you, you gotta I guess try to try to find a defensive game plan to try to, you know, combat it. I mean, I don't know I don't know if you stick with, with man when you play the Warriors and and, and try to take a page out of Kobe's book. Run through the screen. Yeah, yeah, but, keep that. yeah, but you gotta be careful on who does that. It can't, it can't be AD or LeBron that run through that screen. It gotta be somebody who can spare that foul. I, 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 I can, uh, I can, I can exhaust. I can, I don't need Dennis Schroeder. Hey, hey, let let Tristan Thompson do it. He ain't doing yeah. nothing else. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That took him, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He ain't doing nothing else. At at the guard position, you got Reeves, you got D'Lo, you got Schroeder. Nah, 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 man. I'm not wasting can, any fouls. And then, and then you can still come off the bench with uh, Beasley if you need it. You got five, you got exactly. five wing players. I let, I let Dennis Ruder take that foul. It was, I think he didn't even play a lot of minutes. I think he only had like four, four or five minutes that game. Lonnie Walker came, uh, went crazy. It's possible. Like I don't think he played a lot of, a lot of minutes that game. Like Dennis Ruder is expendable. So you basically do what Draymond Green is doing is I'm a I'm a I'm gonna walk up to the line and I'm gonna cross it and I'm gonna see how many times you gonna let me cross it because what Draymond Absolutely. what Draymond and all the NBA commentators will admit to is that once Draymond cross that line and get that first tech it's, it's gonna be very hard mm-hmm. for him to get that second one so he knows once he gets that first one he got a lot of leeway. Because nobody, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that, uh, Mel. Because his play style automatically fishes for flagrant one, and you get a flagrant one, of, or and depending on certain cases, it could turn out to be a flagrant two. That's your second tech. You're gone. Yeah, but 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 my thing is, once he get that first one, he knows that I can get away with more because it it. It, like so, let, let's say I get a, uh, I get my first flagrant or my or, or let's say I get my first tech from getting into a dust up with AD, right? Once I get that first tech, any any dust ups I get in after that, the referees are going to be thinking, is this enough for me to kick him out of the game? Mm-hmm. And the answer is going to be no. So, yeah, yeah. So so it, he's got to do something even more egregious than that for them to be like, all right, you out. Because they, they don't want it, because because they're they're purposely trying not to keep people out of the game in the playoff series and and decide it for for the other team, and he knows that that and and that's part that's part of the veteran part of the Warriors. They know what they can get away with and when they can get away with it and how 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 they can come up to the line and tiptoe the line. Is that veteran savvy? Do you consider that being veteran savvy? That's what they consider veteran savvy. I think it's trash by the NBA to even allow it i think i think all it takes is one good year of consistency where we're not taking no shit from nobody and it'll change everything mm. okay we'll never, we'll never see that year <laughs> we will never see that year <laughs> especially as long as scott foster is still a referee you will never see that year <laughs> hey, hey man you're gonna be in a wheelchair you'll be like oh well <laughs> damn everybody in that car hey, what well, shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, real quick, Scott last 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 NBA topic to before we get the NFL uh and Lamar go take it away for us for the uh, for the NFL. But JJ Reddick, man, he he got an interview um with the Toronto Raptors, man. And uh just just based on JJ Reddick talking on first take on ESPN and on his podcast and everyone saying, 
this guy is sharp and intelligent was enough for him to get consideration for a head coaching job right um <laughs> there are a lot of play there are a lot of players that say they think jj reddy is sharp and deserves um to be a head coach and will and what well, i don't say they, they didn't say deserve to be a head coach they said he would be a great head coach right so that's what that's what everyone is saying that's what the players are saying but here's an interesting take from kitchen perkins uh, he kind of said the same thing, but he said a little something extra, and I want y'all to hear what he said. Uh oh. I wonder what your uh, thoughts are on the the meeting he had, head coach job possibly for Toronto. You think you know, that's a good fit? You know what? I actually love it. Uh, to be honest, which I think JJ, one thing about it, he knows his he knows his shit. Um, and also on top of that, man, anytime you can see a former player that played the game get an opportunity to go sit in that seat. You would love to see it. Um, obviously, he's jumping ahead of a few guys that I would love to see get an opportunity that's been waiting in line. Fair. You know, Shut up. Shut up right uh, there. Sam Kendrick, Cassell, yeah. Phil Handy, uh, you know, uh, Rex Comedian, my guy. So, you know, you hate to see because those guys have served as assistants for about 10, 15, 20 years. Right. You know, right. so – uh, when they don't get an opportunity, but you always want to see a guy like JJ do it, and he knows his shit. And there's no bad blood between me and JJ. I get into it with everybody. All right, who want to go first? God damn it, Kendrick uh, done let said let something first. right. Get up out of here, if don't mind. Hey, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, I agree. I agree with Perk. Um, it, it's one of those things that you hear, right? You you hear one of you. Uh, Say, say me or you get a coaching interview or something like that just because our takes are good. Like, of course, we're going to root for each other, but in the back of our head, we still know there's other more qualified people than you are. Right. So it's like it's like you, you, you're kind of stuck in a, a rock and a hard place with you're not wrong for saying J.J. Reddick is deserving of this job because he has proven his knowledge uh, of the game, he's played the game. He's played the game at a high level. You, you know what I mean. So it's really you can't disqualify him neither. So, but I, I agree. There are other more qualified candidates that we were waiting on. I still feel like uh, Mark Jackson, if if he wanted to coach, he should go pursue a job somewhere as well, and somebody should definitely give him a call. But you know, just. I don't want to take it to a race thing, but I think Kirk would do that before I would. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the call, Dino. Yeah, man. I appreciate y'all having me in, man. Y'all supposed to take it easy. I'm going to still be tuned in. All right, bet. All right, man. Y'all take it easy. All right. All right, what y'all think? Yeah, damn it. Perk got one right. <laughs> <laughs> you really feel he got it right though he got one right and and dennis said it the one i was thinking about if he wanted to coach mark jackson should be the first person any team calls but um i don't like this whole just because he was a player makes him qualify like we saw that with steve nash and we seen how well that worked out right mm. didn't work out too well and, and steve nash was uh uh are, like you could say it was a higher caliber player than J.J. Redick was, right? Two-time MVP, mm -hmm. uh, a, a starter in this league for a long time. I think J.J. Redick might have started just because somebody was injured. So I don't, I've don't, i never seen J.J. in uh, um, a high-capacity role. And uh, now he's in talks for, you know, a head coaching job. I mean, I don't knock anybody for making a check, but – to go from the the analyst booth to you know the head coaching job just because you can talk about the game and you know the game and you play like the every, game. Every player should be able to talk about the game if he's if he's intelligent. Now, if you're just a dumb jock, then I you know you know oh, I, yeah. I expect you to sound like Kendrick Perkins. But you know uh, this is a Duke educated, sharp. He, I mean, four years at Duke, played under Coach K. He's sharp, smart guy. And uh, a cerebral player, I expect him to be able to sound great on a podcast or sound great on first take. Does that qualify you for a head coaching job? I think not. I think, I, just like you said, I think Steve Nash was just as sharp. Uh, and they're, they're blowing people away at interviews probably as well. You know, I mean, because mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's certain things we're looking for 
Uh, and it's similar to the Wonder Lick test with quarterbacks, man. Like, you know, this 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 test is is designed for you to blow it out of the water. You know, so um uh would, would a player like like right now, if he just goes straight to a team, what type of player do you think is it has to be to be like, all right, man, I'm ready to follow JJ Reddick and let and follow his lead? Because it was tough for Steve Nash to get that and get that respect. You get what I'm saying? So um a a, a player's gonna see right through that, you know, and it's not just about how sharp you are. And how much basketball you know can you lead me mm-hmm. honestly i think toronto might be the best situation for that there's no superstar in toronto okay it's a it's a blue collar team it's it's and jj was a blue collar player right so i feel like toronto might be the perfect situation because it's it's players that can relate to jj and is jj can relate to that team you know what i'm saying not necessarily just be like okay i'm ready to you know blindly follow you out the gate but I think it's going to be a lot easier for him to garner the trust of that team. It's no superstar that you have to put above everybody else. It's it's a team full of role players that can actually do well, right? They just need the right push. They just need, and maybe a couple more pieces. But I, I, in that case, I do feel like JJ could probably win the team over. But that's the only team I feel like he could win over faster than any other team that he might have had a, a chance with, just because of the fact that you 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 kind of starting ground level the team is ground level with you and y'all gonna build and learn together mm. Lamar <sighs> you know Mel I think you just got as much qualifications as JJ Reddy why ain't they calling you I mean uh, yeah, I mean I mean if we all just gonna talk basketball and then you go get a job be a head coach, well, I mean shit. Well, I, well look well, he, he, I never played in the league so he at least got that part Okay, he got that, but I'm just saying, it, like, like, come on, man. What? Look, I, I admire Kendrick Perkins. How was you supposed to answer that question? If he say, "Oh no, nah, he ain't, he ain't qualified," he look like a hater. All right, mm-hmm. then they gonna roast him again in social media, talk yeah. about him bad, and then his boss is at ESPN. But like, hey, man, this is your fellow ESPN castmate, man. What, what are you doing? Hey, buddy, mm-hmm. that's that's not what we do around here. We we big each other up, buddy. What are you doing? Come on, Kendrick, get with the program, buddy. Yeah. So then, yeah. then he has a problem outside of work, inside of work now, if he don't answer that the right way. So, I mean, to be honest, I don't even like when when they catch these cats, you know, in, in the midst of anything and they ask these questions. Because, my like, like, come on, man. Like, how is, he, how is Kendrick supposed to answer that question? What? Yeah. Come on, man. If, if he answered that question like me, yeah, spin on, on on his line and the, the next minute that they see that interview. Hey, bro, what you doing? So it's Espe- like, especially after he said that about Jokic. Mm-hmm. His oh, leash wow. is very short. Yeah, come on now. Hey, hey, matter of fact, don't be surprised if he get pulled off of air for a little little bit. And they, hey, come on, man, we need to have a conversation, man. <laughs> Pull up Stephen A and say he was gone for surgery. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, looking at your contract, buddy, uh, Kendrick. To yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna have a conversation. So it, it turns into something else for him. Then it turns. Then, then it's about his money and his. his, he, his had, he so, had no choice but to be diplomatic. Yeah. So so that's not fair on Kendrick to really be put in a position to answer that question. So, but right. is, is JJ Reddick? Look, Steve Steve Nas experiment didn't work. They're going to try it again. Uh, you see it in the NFL. Mike Mayock get a job. Jeff Saturday goes from NFL Live to coaching when there's more capable coaches that was already in the building so it's like you you, you're you're going to see this you're going to see a a crazy hire or even just a crazy interview for me personally if if he really wants to be a coach and go 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 be a coach go get some experience hell go go see g league so go coach somewhere get the experience but to be an automatic candidate for an nba franchise Head coach at that. Head coach at that. Like, come on yeah. now. Like, like you, you went from an assistant. That's what I'm saying. You went yeah. from the outhouse to the penthouse and just like that. And you ain't with, did no with, work. With, without even throwing your name. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing for you to show interest and be like, I want to coach. And you throw your name in the hat and you 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 want to you wanna be interviewed. And it's, and it's another thing for somebody to be like, man, I heard this man on this podcast. Let's see if he want to coach. And then call him for an interview. That's totally different. This he didn't express interest in wanting to go coaching the NBA. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's different. Like, you know, uh, but 
Jason Kidd did, um, you know, uh, when the year the year before he retired, when he was in New York, he was already telling people he was go coach. Mm-hmm. And he 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 retired in New York, and the next thing you know, he had the Milwaukee job, or was it, no, not the Milwaukee, the uh, Brooklyn job. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, now he did walk fr- fresh off the court into a coaching gig. So th- there's nothing wrong with that. Um, um, however, he, man, you got, he's you got his sh- work still because he's still yeah, but, coaching. Yeah, but but look, with and, and I get that. So there was a franchise that took a that took a risk on Jason Kidd. That's still a huge risk. There's no saying that that Jason Kidd was going to be the right coach and actually coach your team to success when he has no track record of being a coach. And I get it. It's going to be risk taking involved with or who you hire as your coach, regardless whether they got coaching history or not. But I prefer a person that's been in the trenches that can that can make those coaching decisions. As in, when it comes to my rotation looking at the things or where we excel at and another team is not so great at that we can attack them at that point that takes yeah. that takes time and effort and work to do it just because you sit and you got all the tools in the in the in the in the touch screens and shit at espn and draw plays up for, for for a segment once in a while that that makes you qualified yeah Come on, man. which is which is why i liked it when the lakers came out and hired darvin ham because not just because he, he's a, a uh, a black man, but because if I remember correctly, he did play. He did. Yeah, he and, played for Milwaukee. He played for Milwaukee. Yeah, and then he played, he played with Big Dog, Glenn Robinson, and Ray Allen. But he's yeah, been yeah. he's been in the coaching ranks for years. Yeah, he's, years. Been in he's worked his way up, and he was an assistant somewhere. Like so, that's that's somebody that's qualified. Like you've been, like you said, Lamar, somebody who came up through the trenches. They had to do the work, not just because you were a player. You know, what I'm saying you actually got coaching experience now because i think they said what like 15 20 years that he'd been coaching like assistant coaching or whatever and you know what's crazy the only reason why steve nash stayed stayed uh, as long as he did is because he had a crew of assistant coaches that's been in, in what the trenches and mm-hmm. he's and he's got a talented roster so Look it's at like Vaughn. oh my goodness what he did after steve nash got bounced so 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 in and when you see a situation like that you're like then what the hell was steve nash really doing there mm-hmm. yeah Look, case in point. Look at look at Boston when when Ime Udoka got bounced, and then Joe Mazzulla stepped up. Another assistant. Uh, he's been there. You get what I'm saying. Now he's yeah. full time. Jock yeah. Vaughn. They was he said they was interim. Then he became full time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. It, just to pull JJ off the off the seat and be like, yeah, we want to you know test this out. I'm a I'm a big fan of 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 you showing your work. I, I like the route that Steve Kerr went. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve Steve Kerr went from championship team to championship team as a player, you know, winning three with the Bulls, winning two with the Spurs, I think. Um, mm-hmm. You know, then he went into the front office job, you know, uh, then he got promoted to the president uh, uh, at Phoenix, you know, so he 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 did different things. Eric Sprosker started out as a film guy and yeah. worked his way up. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's that's how you do it in football. You start out as a special team. Coach Spoke, too. They, put some, they need to put some respect on that dude. Oh, for sure. Oh, for they sure. did. They put him in top. They was he was top ten. He was a yeah. uh, ten greatest coaches of all time. Yeah, and, and look, I, I respect sure. that. I respect yeah, that heavily. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And look, and then and then your coaching tree is important as well. Cool man. You Talk know, to um, him. now it's not the only thing because we, we've seen people get hired that was part of the Belichick coaching tree just because they was part of the Belichick coaching tree, mm-hmm. and that that ain't a good look. You know what I mean? But you got to have more stuff. But you know, JJ Reddy has none of those things. He just has being sharp and being knowledgeable about basketball and that's the only thing he got and you might catch lightning in the ball you might not but this is not the same hire as a steve kerr steve kerr paid his dues Mm -hmm. jj reddy uh hasn't so i i would say no he's not qualified but let's move let's move on to uh uh nfl um um and uh the schedule release release. Yeah, so so I, I want to highlight a couple of games. I like starting that graphic with, down there at the bottom, man. I like yeah, that graphic. <laughs> yeah, start starting with some uh week one matchups and uh one in particular, man, Kansas City Super Bowl champions against this up and coming Lions team. Talk to um him. uh who 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 added some pieces. You know, they got a running back that looked like he might be the next coming of Alvin Kamara. And you know, he From got my a, gifts. Uh, yeah, man. Then yeah. you know, uh, uh, yeah, they, they went and got a a, a quarterback. He might who might not be ready to play this year, but uh, he's he's something to look forward to. And then Jamison Williamson 
I mean, he would have been playing week one, but they hit him with a gambling scandal. But, like, you know, he's still something to be excited about, man. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm very interested in this matchup, man. I want to see how y'all navigate and go through it, which I would expect. And then we'll go through a couple more of the, uh, of the schedule with Lamar, man. But go ahead, man. Go ahead, Super Bowl champ. Nah, first. man, I mean, you know, it, when you Super Bowl champ, it's automatic. You're pretty much going to open up the season. Now, I was surprised because, like, when you tagged me, Chris, I was like, come on, no way they're going to do that. I'm like, come on, man. Like, But then you, when you think about it, you look at a lot of the, the media love that Detroit has been getting, and you see it translate on the field. They they have progressed their win total. Um, you know, you see them putting in the effort to build a, a contending team. And, and this year, you know, I, I'm my way way too early prediction. You know, I got the I got the Lions winning the North. So um, I mean, it's 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 a good media story to you know kick kick the kick the uh, the season off, and uh, you know it, it'll be uh, like my man Detroit Mel say it'd be a good litmus test to see see where the Lions at as a franchise when you go against the you know the the franchise that people are trying to chase and model after as in consistency over the last five years of, of winning so mm-hmm. um it's, it's a good story and and uh hopefully hopefully we can get this meetup to go uh, uh going uh jay you know ho- hopefully you come out you know so i don't i won't well, i won't be the only chief fan in the building but you know the whole iow man down look collab that we got so but now nah, man i think it's gonna be a dope game and it's it's, it's definitely gonna be uh you know, uh, I think I think y'all go get clapped. That's just me personally. <laughs> Who? I think Kansas City go get clapped. I'm I'm oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing wet cheeks right now. Hearing what? I'm hearing wet cheeks and 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 twerking. I, 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 yeah, I think y'all go get clapped, man. Honestly. Wow. I, I mean, I, man, it, that does my heart I, good. I want you to hold on to this clip, and then when we come <laughs> when we come to uh, September seventh, and after everything <laughs> shakes down. Hey, of course, I still got to see the training camp and all that stuff, man. I, I can't. Get, I'm not giving my final prediction yet, but uh, no, no, just, no, hold, just hold on, hold on. Initially, what you mean? You're not giving your final prediction. You just no, said this. Not, this is not my initial game. final tradi- uh, prediction, man. <laughs> but 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 right now, as of right now, I see y'all getting y'all cheeks clapped. Oh man! Wow, that's a, that's an interesting <laughs> take. Um, moving on to the rest of week one. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, I, nah, nah, we moving on because I'm yeah. not going to give you no more ammo for Mel to say anything crazy. <laughs> So, so um, I'm not gonna lie. This was a very well kept secret until yesterday. I was not expecting opening night, but I love the respect. I love the 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 acknowledgement. I love that the the attention that we're got, getting. I got what four or five primetime games. This we year? have four primetime games this year. When we had none. We, we had which, none. Which is a lot of respect for a non-playoff team. That's a lot of respect. And the only only we didn't even have any primetime games last year except for that flex on the last game of the season that turned into Sunday night. You know what I'm saying? So to get four off the and it's it's some good primetime games too. We got Cowboys on New Year's Eve, uh Saturday night. Um yeah, we got Packers Thursday night. So uh I, I, but to get open at night, that's like that's big. That's bright lights, big stage, and you and you have a chance to play spoiler on mm-hmm. banner night. True. Like that, a that is a, a chance. Yeah, I'm not gonna go as far as it was to say what Mel said and say that we're gonna clap Kansas City. I still have a lot to see. I still you have know, a you lot. You know he just jinxed you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot to see. However, I don't think it's gonna be a walk for Kansas City. I think it actually might oh, be a no, dog no. fight. No. I think it might be a shootout. And I'm excited. I'm going to that one in person. Me and me and Lamar, man. I'm be decked out in my blue. You be decked out in your your fire orange or red or whatever color that that shit is. I'll be wearing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a you know what? I think the NFL did good with this one. You got the the reigning heavyweight versus the the up and coming boxer. So yeah. it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good opening night matchup, man. I like that one. I will say this about week one. I'm 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 a hundred percent surprised that the uh that the NFL didn't go with Giants and Jets on Monday night for September 11th. I was shocked that they didn't do that um because of the sentimental values for that, obviously. But they did put the Jets on Monday night on September 11th. Uh obviously Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen matchup. I mean, they, that makes sense. 
Already prime time with it. Already too. prime time. September eleventh. Already 11th, prime so, time. Um, they're they're putting uh, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Welcome to New York. Yeah, we're gonna put you on September eleventh. You know what that means around New York. So. Uh, Welcome to New York. This ain't uh, Green Bay no and, more. <laughs> and it's at MetLife too. Yeah, it's a home game. So uh, I saw that matchup uh, um, that I thought was interesting. Uh, Dolphins, Chargers in week one. Um, and then Dolphins, uh, Chargers. Who's going to be the starting quarterback? Two. Yeah, I man, everything that I'm hearing is they 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 really think two is, two is going to be there. And, um, there's, even, there's even supposed to be a so. new helmet for quarterbacks. I don't yeah. know if it's coming out this season or next, but there's supposed to be a new helmet for quarterbacks. Just, to, just, to just, just make a new rule and just stop tackling quarterbacks. That's what they want to do. Just put they, flags just, on them. Man. I was yeah, just about put, to say put flags on them. Yeah, just put, <laughs> the, just put the red jersey on them like they do at practice. And, and look, man, you got to check. Yeah. Touch them. <laughs> That's your quarterback, man. That's what they want to do. Yeah. You, you also got uh, Deshaun Watson versus Joe Burrow week one, too. So you got a couple of uh, uh, QB matchups that you like. Mm, OK, so, OK. So this is what I want to say about the Cleveland Browns, man. I kept waiting for them to turn the corner and and, and start playing good football because they had so many good pieces, man. They had two Pro Bowl running backs. They had a quarterback that was supposed to be in Pro Bowl. I don't think he ever played like Deshaun Watson last year. Uh, but I. <laughs> I don't I don't know if that's gonna happen again this year, man. Like to be honest with you. Is Kareem Hunt coming back? Coming back? No, I think he's gone. I think he's I think he's still a free agent. Matter of free fact. Agent. So so they didn't sign him. So they let him walk. They should have just traded him last year. They really thought they was gonna make a run. If they thought if they kept him, they really must have thought they was gonna make a run. Cause they could have got they could have got a draft pick out of that. Easily. Mm-hmm. Easily. You know, because he, um, he's a starting running back on, on a lot of franchises right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for at least two more years. Yeah. But um I don't um I don't have a lot of confidence in uh the Cleveland Browns. I I want them to do good cuz I I they I see I see the I see the I see the formula there. They got uh you know, they got an o line they can run, you know, run blocking and all that stuff, man, and they got a they got a one of the top 3 running backs in the league and then they got a quarterback that's that good. So, I see that they got something there. I just got I got to see them um Actually, turning into something, man. So I don't know, man. I don't even know if I'm excited about that matchup. <laughs> I'm gonna um, drop a hot take for y'all real quick, though. I got I got Cleveland doing better than Baltimore in the division this season. You out? You out for that one, bro? Yeah, you out for that one? <laughs> yeah, I think you out for that one. It's a, it's a it's a lot of plug and play going on in Baltimore, and I don't think it's gonna work. What you mean? What you what what try, trying to add pieces? Yeah, Odell. I, I think I don't think Odell. I don't even think Odell makes it through the whole season. I, I hate you know, but come on, two ACLs and that's, I ain't I, go, it's, I'm it's not the even same gonna one. In, I'm not even gonna allow you to put that in the atmosphere. As a matter of fact, I'm about to I'm I'm, I'm about to edit that part out. <laughs> soon, soon, I'm just like, talking. I'm just talking about history. I'm just talking about history. You can't even put that in the atmosphere though. Uh, Chris. I, I'm, of course, I want Odell to have a, a great, full, healthy season. But you have to you have to be a realist. I, I, ACL, and, 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 I, and I want ACL you to get injuries. a prostitute pregnant tonight. You want me to put that in the atmosphere? Like, how would you feel? How would you feel if I threw that? If I just threw that out there? I mean, that means I'm getting some play, which I haven't had in a while. So I guess I'll take yeah. it. So you take that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your, life, your, life, your life won't be the same, boy. Your life won't be the same. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Lacour, don't risk it, dog. Don't risk it, bro. Nah, hey, nah, not not for that it. biscuit. Not for that nah, biscuit. Uh, nah, bro. That that. Uh, Trust me, yeah. you, you ain't got Magic Johnson money. Just make your shit disappear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you ain't got it like that. Nah, I think I think Baltimore will will. It, they're gonna have to. They actually spend the first round pick on a on a on a on a skill. Bro, so oh, I was still hurt. They took the flowers, bro. That I was, was that hurt. was impressive. I think I think Lamar put that in his contract. It was like, hey, I'm gonna sign this contract, but that first round pick, you gonna you gonna give me somebody. <laughs> you gonna give me somebody. So, I was so hurt. Um, they took Zay Flowers. I wanted Zay Flowers to come to Kansas City so bad, bro. Oh Zay Flowers is the truth. <laughs> y'all don't need no mean, more. No, y'all don't need nothing else. Y'all good with y'all got. Running back. Same people. Nah, hmm. man. <laughs> uh, this is something interesting that I haven't seen from the NFL. Um, they're doing double headers on Monday nights. So That's week two, week three, and week 14, you got double headers. Now, oh, normally doing multiple that- weeks. Yes. Now, normally oh. back in the past, when the NFL did a double header, they would have like your one start at like um, seven o'clock, and your next one starts at ten. So you would have that gap. 
this year they're really actually overlapping so week two week three and week 14 um when you got those double headers so week two and three they got double headers one starts at like 7 15 and your next one starts at 8 15. Uh, so mm. that's that's the first that's- one that yeah that's the first one I've never seen the NFL do that ever before because they've always been about their money and want you to focus on that solo game on a Monday night. And now yeah. you're competing with another football game on pretty much an hour separated. Now week That's 14, they're doing a doubleheader, but they're playing them at the same time at 8.15. So I've never seen the NFL do that. Um, so that was that was one of the interesting things that I saw uh, when, they, when they released the schedule. I'm like, NFL... Real quick, Lamar, what's those games? All right, so week two, those doubleheaders, you got Saints-Panthers. So Panthers actually got a couple of primetime games. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so they're, they're definitely going to display Bryce Young, and then they're, they're going to display him early um, against the Saints, but that's a tough team to display him against on primetime. Um, and then you got Brown-Steelers. Uh, that's uh, the second game on that doubleheader. Uh, week three, you got Eagles-Buccaneers and rams Bengals. On that doubleheader. Uh, week 14, on that doubleheader, you have Packers, Giants, Titans, Dolphins. So, Ew, what in the world? Hey, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out, Chris. Now the, now the NFL changed it. Now, I think it used to be like week 14 or 15 is when they start flexing. Now they actually moved it up to week 12. Yeah. So pretty much past week 12, um, some of those games were because you're getting some crazy matchups. You're like, ugh, like why are we doing this to ourselves? Um, like here's for instance, they got Kirk Cousins and the Vikings at least three or four primetime games, and we all know how Kirk Cousins do on primetime games. So I don't know why they keep he's, doing that to he's us. Still winless. Hey, <laughs> so, so so here's the kicker. So the last game of 2023. Is going to be Packers and Vikings as the last game that they got so, slated. So no, that's, Jordan, that's not Jordan, the last. That's not the last Jordan game Love, of the season. It Jordan, won't no, be last game of twenty twenty three. Jordan Love and 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 Kirk, Kirk Cousins Kirk. facing off, and we don't even know if Cook is going to be in Minnesota. Lamar, that's not the last game of the season. Of the, no, no, I'm of saying twenty twenty three. Oh, that's oh, a, that's oh. the last game they got slated for the year before oh. on, on the thirty first on that New Year's Eve. Boy, that's the last is. game that's slated right you. now. You know he went to school in Detroit. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he meant at the end of the 2023 20, at the end of the season. I didn't know. I, say hey, calendar hey. year, man. Damn, I, I, I knew exactly what you meant, Lamar. Thank, I knew exactly you, what you. Thank, we, yeah, we yeah. all we all can't go to Hill, yes. man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your pay, your your people did you no favors. They should have sent your ass to him, man. They should have yeah. sacrificed a little bit more. <laughs> that was that was, that was poisoning his mind and his water at the same time. <laughs> uh, so okay, so so check it right. So they they updated the rules where every team is allowed to be flexed twice because it was only one time. You was only able to you so now they've allowed it to you can get flexed twice, and you are able to get. Two Thursday two night Thursdays. games. Two Thursdays. Two um, Thursday night games now. So I'm, I'm not that's really a lot of room. That. I'm not really caring about that two Thursday rule because my thing is, if you want it, I mean, you're gonna go get it. it. They, they're gonna schedule it anyway. Uh, it's right, best right. On matchup, so it's like, who cares? Um, but I did like the fact that the NFL did, for a fact, say that not all teams will get a prime time game. So as of right now, Houston Texans. Atlanta Falcons, Indianapolis Colts, Arizona Cardinals do not have a primetime game, and I'm okay with that. Thank um, God. I hope they learned a lesson from last year's Indianapolis debacle. Yeah, and I'm okay Indiana- with that. Indianapolis had like five primetime games, and they shit them all. Um, there's a, Obviously, with Sean Payton going to Denver, they got four or five primetime games, so they're trying to see if that makes a difference with let Russ and Cook, but I'm still like, uh, keep Russ ass out the kitchen. Mm. That's me. He let him be a host, you know. Let him bring people to the table, you know, and, nah, and let him sit down. Pala, he go, he gonna be Paula Ding this year. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, uh, on it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking at the line schedule, right? And we have two games that don't have a time or date. 
mm-hmm. and that's we had it's like week 14 or 15 against the broncos and then it's the last game of the season against the vikings right well no that's everybody on, on week 18. the reason why the okay. nfl does that on week 18 is because they're looking at playoff scenarios um they're looking mm, at that's um, what I was ask. they're looking at playoff seedings you know where's everybody at and then they'll de- determine uh, uh that's why literally everything says tbd uh mm-hmm. to be determined because they're looking at uh not only playoff scenarios but the matchups that matter so that they actually maximize on the viewership so they still haven't even you know come up with an idea who's going to be that sunday night game um you know like last year it ended up being packers and, and alliance because mm-hmm. that, that meant something um implications. It had implications and of course um week 18 is always the last week is always going to be divisional games so um they're looking at you know who's which one makes the most sense story-wise not just story-wise but also playoff season so that's why you will always see that for now on on uh, week 18. um some interesting matchups leading up to week 18 week 17 you got a rematch of kansas city oh. cincinnati um i like that idea um uh, have a very playoff implicated seating type of game late in the season to prefer you know uh favorites in the afc obviously and you know it's, just gonna, be another, it's gonna be another l for kansas city and you know what i'm okay with that Cincinnati can beat kansas city as much as they want in the regular season as long <laughs> as it matters in the postseason of when they win i don't give a damn beat a, look kansas city could lose damn near <laughs> every home game to buffalo and cincinnati i don't give a damn I'm, I'm, I'm only watching games that kansas city has a chance to lose anyway <laughs> I, I do not turn on the TV to, to, to sit and watch Pat Mahomes yeah. and Kelsey. Uh, I mean, they, they've 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 turned into Steph Clay and Draymond for mm-hmm. me right now. And you and you know, I rooted for Golden State for years yes, until they yeah. became unbearable, and their fans came became unbearable, and they started, you know, excusing all that bad behavior, man. Like you know, you, you know, and, and I feel like that's what I'm like, man. Dog, everything Pat Mahomes and Kelsey do is just it's just gold, you know, Turn like they go, yeah. yeah, like they dookie gold out. And I'm like, man, dudes. <laughs> but you know what? But you know what? And I'm gonna be and I'm gonna be real. This is a, a different dynamic, obviously, uh, for me, because I've been rooting for the Chiefs for all my life. So this is it's some of the attention I don't care for because I know it's coming from heat off of these these bandwagon uh, you know, people that yeah. ain't been rotting when when yeah, hell yeah. when when uh we had Joe Montana man, was there oh, Joe Montana, there. Yeah, you yeah. know when we had Rich Gannon when we had now Jamal uh, Charles there was yeah, yeah, Jamal yeah. Charles. Yeah, yeah. we was struggling with with them uh uh Tom Brady's backup and Matt, Matt Castle like like we got cats that's causing all these ruckus that you know they've been hopping on hey Patrick Mahomes I like him too yeah like come on bro so it's like you I mean you get that in every sport like all these warrior fans pop up all of a sudden they probably couldn't even tell you who monte ellis was you know what i'm saying they probably couldn't even tell you who mitch richmond or chris weber none of them old school uh warriors anybody so it's like yeah. you know they couldn't tell you who chris mullen is they had yeah. no idea they had no clue so you see that's that, that, that. this <laughs> <laughs> damn you that's this azili yeah, you done, man, you went, bro. You went four years back, Chris. Stop, <laughs> man. That is not impressive, man. You went four years back, man. This dude, this dude named Mitch Rich, man, and 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 run TMC and all this stuff. You he named this, and you I'm just saying that's the Zilly is a, because, that's because Zilly's because a crazy the, name. That's four, four. That's four years ago, though, man. Nah, he was he was nah, out, he was a while ago. What Bar- Baron, ago, Davis? Baron Davis? Baron Davis? <laughs> you not man. You you born in the nineties, man. Just stop. Yeah, man. Like, uh, you not going far at all. Like you, so, you showing so, your age. I saw how Lamar get credit for Monte Ellis, but I don't get credit for for Baron Davis. You didn't say nothing about no Monte Ellis. No, Lamar he said did. Monte Ellis. I'm saying how did he get credit for Monte Ellis, but I don't get credit for Baron Davis. Because it, Monte Monte Ellis was a young buck coming in, and Baron Davis was the one who had the big name. You can pull Baron Davis out out, out the hat. He was a first round draft pick. Lamar, what's uh what's the uh the center name? Not David West, but the other one that played for um I, oh Maurice Space. There you go, Maurice Space. Oh, there you go. There you go. Maurice Space. Mo Space. There you go. Bro, he played with Steph. So that was eight years ago. 
All right, go ahead, Lamar. <laughs> no, um, so you you got you got five international games this year. Um, you got uh, Jaguars and uh, Bills. Hated uh, it. Yeah, that's trash. Well, this is interesting. So the Jaguars actually got a back to back um, in London, and so let me ask y'all this: What? How so, to work yes. that out? So let me ask y'all this. I, I guess point, I guess they don't want to waste that gas to go out there for one game. So let me ask y'all this. At one point, do you just say, just leave the Jaguars over there? Just leave them over <laughs> there. I'm just saying though. <laughs> At one point, do you say just leave their ass over there? You know, just, okay. just, just Urban think, Meyer. Just leave Urban Meyer over there. I don't think Duval go like that. So week four, you got the Falcons, Jaguars in London. And then, like I Ew. said, they got the back to back. They got Jaguars and Bills. So they're they're trying to get that Trevor Lawrence and that um that Josh Allen matchup right there. So week six, you got another London game, but you got Baltimore Ravens and Tennessee Titans. So you're going to showcase Lamar Jackson. Unfortunately, the Titans, who I think are going to be a very bad team this year, you got to endure that. Um, here's my here's my take, uh, my way too early take of the NFL season. Um, Mike Vrabel doesn't uh, keep the job through the end of the season. I think he gets clipped in, in the end uh, about midway through the season. If you take a look Jeez. at the Tennessee Titans uh first six, it'll it'll make you cringe. Um it's on paper right now. Um obviously there's a lot to you know happen with training camp and how the team's gonna play during the season. But if you right now, if you look at the paper, they got a very tough uh first six that are just brutal. And that team is rebuilding. I don't care what any Tennessee Titans fans say, they are rebuilding, rebuilding, so, rebuilding. So you so you think Vray, you think Vray will uh, uh be on a hot seat before Tannehill will? I think Vray was already a, on a hot seat. I think it's a package deal. I think yeah. you so, cut one and fire the other. Well, so nah, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's it's gonna be one <laughs> first, right? So so do you think Vray will gets fired before Tannehill gets benched for uh the, the second year quarterback? Nah, no, Tannehill will uh, be benched, and if it still doesn't work, then Vrabel will be fired. Bingo. That was my take. Because you mm-hmm. you grab Malik Willis last year. They're not having confidence in him. You have a change in management, new general manager. You go get Will Levis this year. So now you're literally showing to the world that you are literally throwing everything at the quarterback position but Ryan Tannehill, the guy that you paid. So um, and the fact that you've already paid him, uh, Derrick Henry hasn't gotten really paid like like he was supposed to, and Mike Vrabel's the center of all this. And you collapsed the way that they did. They lost seven in a row last year. Yeah, that was bad. I mean, you you trick AJ Brown. Literally, you just gave the Philadelphia Eagles a number one wide right receiver. I just uh, I just hate when I just hate when teams be making these bad decisions and then. Instead of fixing that bad decision, they start making Maybe these other coach. moves that make it worse. Like you look, you look at whatever they was doing in 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 uh in Houston, and O'Brien, his bright idea to fix it was to get rid of D Hop. Mm-hmm. Like oh, you get what I'm saying, like like for peanuts, <laughs> Jay, for peanuts. Yeah, it, it, you know what I mean. And 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 the Titans, you pay Tannehill, and. All right, we find out Tannehill not gonna take us to the promised land. Well, how we fix this? Well, well, get rid of AJ Brown. Like, how the heck do they be coming up with this stuff, man? How do you su- add by subtracting somebody that good? Mm-hmm. I like what Philadelphia did. They pivoted away from a quarterback. Well, not a quarterback. They pivoted away from a head coach that won them a Super Bowl really quick. Uh, as Once soon as they felt like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon, hey, all right, we pivot away from him, yeah. and they pivoted away from Carson Wentz real quick, and went even after they paid, Hurts. even after yeah, they exactly paid. went so, straight you know. to Jalen Hurts. That's how yeah. you pivot and make quick decisions, mm-hmm. right? No, you're making right. the wrong ones in Tennessee. Yeah, I, um, I think the, I feel like. Um, <laughs> Oh, he is a Titans fan too. What, what up, Jay? <laughs> What's up, Jay? Uh, I feel like Tannehill has that four game leash that a lot of people give their their quarterbacks or whatever in the beginning of the season. I think now it's that time, right? Because now you have Malik Willis and you just drafted Will Levis, so you're already showing your hand, like, hey, we're no, not they, afraid they to replace to you, Will Levis, bro. They yeah, really so, want to get that job to Will. Yeah, Levis. so that's what that's what that's what I'm saying. They 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 put in Tannehill on that four game leash. And the moment it looks dire, Chris, even even two and two, they pull. Chris, them. it's not a four game leash. It's it's four weeks, and I'm talking about preseason. Mm. 
Let Will Levis come out you there think, and like you think Levis gonna steal the job out of preseason? If he, if he light up if he one do, game, hell yeah. I'm right? telling you, if, hey, I'm I'm with you on that, Mel, because I I didn't say this to Jay yet, and we haven't talked about it, but if Will Levis, he he if he does the Russell Wilson thing, goes into training camp and outplays Matt Flynn, they're gonna they're gonna throw him in week one. And because yeah. at this point, you're still you're rebuilding and trying to fill so many holes, and you got a lot of question marks at just about damn near every position. The only position you're not really worried about is Derrick Henry and Jeffrey Simmons. Other than that, you got a lot of question marks on that on that football team of how do we fit? And so if Tanny Hill goes in there and bombs, it's no different if you throw Will Levis in there, who we go get in the second pick, uh, second round, and he bombs. It's no different. Let's go ahead and get get Will Levis the experience of playing in the NFL because he's probably going to give you the same output Ryan Tannehill is going to give you, if not more. They want Will Levis in that starting position as soon as he can get it and give him a reason to give it to him. Yeah. I want I want to I want to get Jay to call in. I want to get that Titans fan uh, in, in here and, and, and tell us what he needs. Come on through, Jay. Call in, Jay. Call in, double J. Let's talk yeah, about yeah, it. Definitely call in, man. Number is right there on the screen, man. Yeah. Um. But but uh. Back to the NFL schedule. So you got two more uh international games. Uh, week nine. You got Dolphins and Chiefs. And I'm gonna stop right here. And this is not me being a Chief fan. This is me looking at an NFL as in how you market your your games and you look at how Tyree Kill and that story with him in Kansas City, they trade him, he wanted more money. They were only willing to pay him so much. And then, you know, Tyreek's been, you know, been creating his WWE character since he's been in Miami, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, hyping up his podcast and he'll throw out a little nugget out there and and that nugget he's throwing it out has Kansas City in it. And so you look at him chirping. Matter of fact, he came back to Kansas City a couple of months ago, did an uh, interview with the local radio station, sports station, and said, man, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to get there overhead and bust y'all ass. I'm going to throw up the deuces at y'all. <laughs> you know, so he's chirping in Kansas City. And, and then you look at certain Chiefs players, they're like, yeah, we heard what he said. And then the NFL takes that game out of Arrowhead and they throw it in Germany. That's probably a move that I didn't. I understand the reason why you do it. You want to market Patrick Mahomes in Germany. You want to market Tyree Kill and and the Dolphins, and you take that matchup and you're gonna you know expand into your international crowd. So hey, here's a story for you guys to latch on to. I understand that point, but you literally took something away that a lot of people were anticipating, especially in the city. I hear they would yo they couldn't wait to see hey. When Tyree coming to Arrowhead, I agree. When, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, that's I mean, like when you see that it's like when you see KD returns to OKC. That's when you see LeBron returns to Cleveland type of situation. You want to see that in that stadium, in that in that in the states. So I, I, I look, I agree with that, Lamar. How, however, they might have been thinking about it another way. Mm-hmm. Right. So if if they know that they, they automatically go get eyes on this game because of that or that uh that setup you just talked about. Yeah. Um it's it's low hanging fruit to, to have it in Kansas City. All right. We I mean we go get the KC fans, but uh maybe they're having trouble getting people to watch these overseas games because they, they do air kind of early. Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe with uh Tyree Hill and Kansas City having that little back and forth. Maybe that'll pique everybody's interest, and you know they can sell that game to a network better by saying we know people are gonna have eyes on this game. Yeah. So maybe that's what they was thinking. And to your point, the reason why you say that, and I can agree with that, is because you look at the next matchup, and we uh, we ten for the last international game is in Germany as well, and you got Patriots and Colts. So Patriots, Colts, Patriots, Colts, Patriots. Ew. So that's so that's, so, so so to your point. On, on why you sell that to your international crowd is because you follow it up with a trash matchup in week 10. <laughs> so who, who, who is like sending these games to the league office like, yeah, this is hot fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, you would well, think they would have learned their lesson last year from all the primetime duds wild, that they bro. had. It's wild. And, um, you know, just and a now couple y'all taking of, these duds international. Hey, it, it, it's crazy, bro. But he, here's another interesting note. Obviously, 
um we're having our first black friday uh, nfl game this year so um you're going to get three thanksgiving games of course you get packers lions commanders cowboys niners seahawks and you get the game friday black friday is going to be a uh, 3 3 p.m eastern standard time afternoon game you get dolphins and jets so you're going to get dolphins taking on aaron Rodgers and the jets division game um so you get Technically, you're going to get about five primetime games uh, that week. Um, you get the uh, Monday night game. Unfortunately, is Kirk Cousins and the Vikings taking on the Bears. Uh, Ravens Chargers is going to be your Sunday night primetime game. And then, of course, you get all three Thanksgiving games and then you get the Black Friday game. Um, so that'll be that's the first. Be a dope week. That's yeah, that's going to be a dope week, that's gonna be a dope week right wanna, there, man. I wanna, Ain't nothing getting done. I want to yeah. highlight a game that uh, – that last Thanksgiving game, Niners Seahawks, Seahawks yes, yes, is going to be fire. fire. Yep, yep. Um, now, NBA, Adam Silver, let me talk to you real quick. Now, I know that you've had the NBA on on, on, in, on Christmas Day on lock for a lot of years. <laughs> and then you, then you went up against Big Bad NFL last year and it didn't go too well for you. <laughs> All right. So I'm advising you right now. Whatever matchups you got on Christmas, you better either make it your best matchup or don't do no Christmas games at all. Because not only is the NFL back on Christmas Day, they're giving you Raiders, Chiefs, mm. Eagles, Giants, mm. Ravens, and 49ers on Christmas Day. Sheesh. So it was, it was an A bag like the fries at the bottom on that one. Adam Silver. Adam Silver. NBA ain't got no more matchups like that they can throw he out there, man. The who, who, who you want to see on Who you want to see on Christmas? Adam who you want to see on Christmas? They on ain't got nothing else. Listen, on Christmas they Day, they need listen, they need to go pull Bronny from USC. <laughs> they need to go pull a <laughs> hey, no. hey, Victor Wimbignana versus Chet Holmgren. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm, you, I'm you, gonna tell you, you the mist- pull out all the stops. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell you the mistake the NBA made, man. Right. So so think think about when you used to be hype about these Christmas games. When when Golden State was what they were with uh with kd and they was facing uh uh cleveland and lebron was what you know had Kyrie there there was a there was a great christmas matchup right then you had uh before that you had kobe in la facing again you know they brought in maybe, miami brought in miami or maybe or, or, or maybe or, 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 or maybe i don't know if they ever played the uh boston big three boston big three was good or uh, was good money and gold Mellow what in they, new york had a christmas game and that's yeah required. so so what they did is is they purposely diminish KD's reputation, so that's not even exciting no more. People don't even think KD is all time great, right? So they you can't even sell KD no more, and they trying to push Giannis, Luca, Jokic in our face, and nobody want to watch them. Hmm. Nobody nobody wants to watch them, right? Uh, so that where they're going to go and, and 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 the golden state warriors have become unbearable nobody even liked them personality wise anymore mm. and where did the nba go for a, a christmas game now like you know and don't answer that because we're on football i just wanted to throw that out there no no the true answer is move move off of christmas day <laughs> let it go i'm telling you Mel, you saw the matchups last year and even the best matchup couldn't even get a quarter of what the the in the, the worst matchup in the NFL did last year couldn't even get a quarter yeah. of it. So it's like yeah. at some point you gotta you just I know you want to sit there and and and, and Adam Silver in the, in the front office of the NBA they want to be on that same pedestal with the NFL viewership wise popularity hopefully income wise at some point. Now you your pay your players are getting paid more more guaranteed money. I should say yeah. that you get more guaranteed yeah. money. So you you got that part right, but as yeah. in trying to get viewership and the way that they the way that the, uh, the WWE NFL uh, operates is not how the WWE NBA operates. It's two different things. The, the NFL is generating way too much popularity and money, and their TV yeah. deals that they continue to get are astronomical, and your viewership just won't match up at all. Yeah. The NBA, but they, I mean, they got to stop fixing their games. 
so much. They're not doing good. They're not good doing good with it no more. They gotta stop fixing their game so much, man. You know, that, you know where else thing. the NBA messed up with the Christmas games? <laughs> they took away the Christmas jerseys. That was one of the mm, yeah, biggest things. Chris, it was, it was cool. Cool. Christmas jerseys was fire. I don't even remember none of them. But then Chris, nobody was watching for nobody was watching for those. No, but I'm just, I'm was, just saying like that was nobody was watching for that man. Like, on, no, I'm man. not saying that they was watching for it, but I'm saying like you got that's how that's when like people got excited. People were actually buying the Christmas jerseys. I have a Christmas jersey. Nobody you know was watching. Nobody was cared about them Christmas jerseys. That's just hey, like but, saying you you know what you you know what corn hub messed up at. When 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 the females' toes wasn't painted, that's that's when they messed up. <laughs> I'm just saying that was another thing that they need to bring back. They need to bring back the Christmas jerseys. Hey, hey, on some real man, some busted toes will turn the brother off, dog. It's in the heart because well, like it's not, I it's not like I'm putting them in my mouth or nothing. They'd be like, yeah, I'm I'm ready. But is it? Is that a bunion? Oh, I can't jack all that is, man. Turn this shit off, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no but I think, uh, I think the biggest thing is that because the stars that we had that that made Christmas shine like that, Derrick Rose and the Bulls, LeBron, yeah. and the, LeBron and the Heat with D-Wade, Kobe, uh, LeBron and Kyrie, Katie and Steph, like all those yeah. stars are on the way out. And the stars coming in are – are half superstars they're manufactured superstars like they're not supposed to be superstars they're they're forcing them into superstardom and it's i'm not i don't want to watch a game where like kobe you get you get effort on both sides of the ball Mm -hmm. the 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 and passion and, and, and it was passion for all those games. You Mello. Don't get no passion from Luca. You, he just crying up for. He won't fouls. He step oh back gosh. down. There's no defense. Mello, Mello loved the game and showed so much emotion. And like yeah. those comeback games where he was hitting those big shots, sending MSG into a frenzy. You know, he, those don't. They don't. There's no games like that anymore because there's no superstars like that anymore. The superstars mm-hmm. that we had like that are on their way out the league. It's a different or they're, game. They're bro. not. They're not. They're not playing with that that much intensity because they're older now. They don't have it in them like that. And Giannis mm-hmm. doesn't have that. Jokic doesn't have that. The only one that probably does have that emotion and that passion is probably Embiid. But what you gonna do? Play Embiid or in five Embiid, Christmas games? Embiid, Embiid, Embiid got it. Kyrie got it. Steph got it. Tatum just, got it. But they pushing, they pushing Kyrie out. Um, uh, and they pushing KD out. You know, uh, LeBron's old. It's, it's it's just all jacked up, man. The NBA, I mean, people would look at the numbers and be like, oh, man, uh, Luka putting up triple doubles and, and 30, 10, and 10, and be like, the league is in good hands. The league is not in good hands, bro. It's not. But anyway, let's finish this, this schedule, though. Yeah, no, no. That's pretty much it, man. Some very interesting things that I saw with the schedule. Um, the double headers that I thought was a very strange move by the NFL. Uh, three Christmas games. Um, like I said, that's trouble for the NBA. Um, you get the Black Friday game, and then uh, you know uh, that week seventeen falls on New Year's Eve, so that's when you get the uh, Chiefs and Bengals. So that's a good matchup. Uh, you, uh, there's a lot of uh, playoff rematches. Uh, uh, Eagles and Niners meet up again in Philly. Um, mm. you get a rematch of the Super Bowl in Week Twelve. Real good. Uh, Eagles and Chiefs in Kansas City. So um, you, you're going to see a lot of. Um, I think you're going to see uh, when you see those rematches of a lot of playoff uh, teams that have met up or played in the Super Bowl. I think you're going to get a, a very compelling game, it's, and it's easy to sell. It's a low-hanging fruit to sell those games. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, obviously, you see the Rogers effect in New York immediately. Uh, they're getting about four or five primetime games. Uh, the Russell Wilson with Sean Payton, they get four or five primetime games. Um, the Lions, you know, get four primetime games, uh, obviously being one of the uh, media darlings that a lot of people right. are talking about. Um, so real you, quick, real yeah. quick, have they come out with strength of schedule yet? Like, that, ha, do, do they have a list of people who have the easiest or the hardest schedule? Yes, yeah. I, I had that pulled up too. Hold on, let me, let me, uh, let me pull that up real quick. I just had it too. Um, and you know what? I'm not gonna lie, man. I don't really care for why he's pulling that up. I don't really care for. The strength of schedule rubric because you is based off of teams when winning from yeah. the season before. Yeah. Right. A lot of teams are well. For, first off, a lot of teams can't replicate what they did last season, and a lot of teams don't have what they had last season. Mm-hmm. So to I say, so, so so to say that your strength of schedule is based off of their their record from last year, 
is it's in inact- it's an inaccurate statement you know what i'm saying i so i just i never really liked the rubric for that well i mean you know it, to your point when when you just literally base it off of a, a team's win loss record from a year before and it's something way totally different and like you said because you can't you know you can't obviously 100 percent you know, determine what a team is going to look like after a draft, after training camp, after exactly. So it's like, it, but I mean, it's just like anything else. It's just something to talk about, something to, um, you know, make it seem like it's, uh, you know, something, something to really, you know, give give people talking points at some point. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's just, it's another way for the NFL that, which is why I think the NBA will never catch up to them. The NFL strategically does a lot of things to place uh, things that really don't matter and trying to make it seem like it matter. Like strength of schedule really don't matter because at the end of the day, you got to play the game. You're like you're in the NFL, you can lose to anybody at any point in time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so they always emphasize that. Like, look at the draft. The draft really at some points really didn't matter. It mattered to junior managers because that's how you build your team. But for the right. fans, that never mattered. Now look at it. It's it's now an it's now a three day event going from city to city, builds, you know, brings in generates money like crazy. Um I mean when the draft was just here in Kansas City and I just missed it. Uh man, they they brought in almost almost three hundred twenty thousand people in the city. Right. Right. Uh, Nashville brought in six hundred thousand people when they had the draft there. Like, yeah. At some speaking point, of Nashville, yeah. speaking of Nashville, <laughs> Jay Jones on the line, man. Tennessee. Hey, friend, man. hey. Jay, what up, my boy? <laughs> hey, what's going on, fellas, man? How y'all feeling, man? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, man. Yeah. Tell us, uh, tell us about this Tennessee situation with their quarterback, man. Man, it's a mess, bro. It's a it's a true mess, man. Um, Mar, tell you, uh, I definitely wasn't a fan of the Will Levis pick. Actually, um, the dra- on the actual draft night, uh, me and my um, G asked me which quarterback I thought was going to be a buck. I held off because I didn't I, I didn't want to say who, and then we ended up picking him, and I did it anyway. I thought Will Levis was going to be a blast. And we still picked him in the second round. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not happy about it. I'm a I'm a huge Malik Willis fan. I believe um, I, I think he has the tools to be successful. Uh, when Tennessee drafted him, we knew he was going to be a project. Like we knew he was going to be, you know, take a few years for him to to, to develop. And you know. When they fired uh, general manager John Robinson and they brought a new um, brought a new team in, you know, when that happens, they want to bring the players that they want to bring in. And unfortunately, that's what happened. And Malik didn't really – he wasn't set up for success. Mm. And that's that's where we got here. Tannehill's on his last year. Um, they've been trying to shop him around all offseason for the most part. I would have preferred to get C.J. Stroud if he did go another route. But he's been – you know, they made that move and grabbed them. So it's it, it's a mess. I, I, I agree with you guys. Um, I think Shannon Hill is kind of like on a short leash. Um, Will Levis, if he does what he's supposed to do and he, he shows potential, especially with our depleted wide receiver core, are they going to give him the keys real early? And, you know what I'm saying, and try to see if we can, and they're going to see what he got. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, we'll have an early draft pick and maybe we'll get Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, so do you have any uh, confidence in Will Levis? Um, not really. Um, I've been trying to watch some of his tape and trying to listen to his interviews. I mean, he has potential, right? But what what is that? You know what I'm saying? A lot of players have potential, but um, I'm not sold on them yet. And um, <laughs> I just don't. I, I'd rather just. I'd rather Malik Willis be be out there, man. I'd rather him get that <laughs> that shot. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Put it this way, though. All right, so let's say Tannehill, because I don't think Tannehill go see much success this this year. I mean, I don't even know who he's, who we throwing to. Um, so me let's, and you and and Chris <laughs> and, 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 exactly right. So. It, Expect, expect, you know. It, let's say Henry declines just a little bit, and he's not able to carry the load like he, like you know, like you've been doing. 
and Tannehill has declined a little bit on top of the fact they ain't got nobody to throw to, so you send eight in the box every week. Um, so what's probably going to happen is Tannehill is going to be the first uh, 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 ball to drop, and he might get benched. And as a Titans fan, you're saying that when that happens, you would rather for it to be Willis instead of Will Levis. Now, that's the first part of the question. Second part of it is if Tannehill can't make nothing happen with that uh, depleted receiving core, once you put Willis in, a second-year player, isn't that kind of setting him up for failure? Um, It is setting him up for failure. I mean, both quarterbacks are going to be set up for failure because I, I honestly, with our, with our playmakers on the outside, it's not really too much either one of them can do. I mean, Tannehill can't really do much with, with them either. But, I mean, I feel like, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a failure for both. But, I mean, at least you kind of still get a chance to see what Malik Willis has. Me, personally, I don't think Malik Willis is going to even make the roster opening day. Dang. Wow. And I say that, and I say that not because of talent wise. I say that because of what I see Tennessee do in the past. Tennessee only only carries two quarterbacks. He might be on the practice squad. Worst wow. case scenario, but Tennessee only carries two quarterbacks. And last year, when we decided to go with Josh Dobbs over Malik Willis for the final playoff spot, I think that was a huge like red flag for Malik Willis. That's like, yeah, we don't believe in you. We're going to go with somebody who has a little bit of experience, but he's off the street. Ten days, and we're going to go with him. Like, I thought that was disrespectful Yeah. to Malik Willis. Like, that's like, what do you mean? Like, bro, I've been on your roster the whole year, and you will go with somebody that's off the street and been in the facility for a week? Nah, that's disrespectful. And I even said it to Mark last night on our podcast. I, I really think that um, this is Mike Rabel. He can get on the hot seat, um, depending on what Tennessee does this year. I haven't got a chance to fully look at the schedule, but I do know it's pretty top heavy. Um, we got some some folks. We got some good teams we're going to deal with in the first four to five games. So it, it's going to be a lot of moving pieces. New GM in. Um, it, it, the quarterback situation is the most it, is terrible right now, and I think they said right now Tannehill is the highest paid, like one of the highest paid QBs this year. And just knowing that, and no playmaker, yeah, it's gonna be tough. All right, so Jay, Jay, let me ask you a question. What's so, up? with the trade deadline being, I think like week eight, uh, this is something I've been thinking about since the Titans have kind of been on the decline the last couple of years. What are the chances? No, no, we ain't been on a decline the last couple of years. So we we declined last year. We ain't on the last couple of years. Right? <laughs> Hold on, on that. It's, it's been the last couple of years. Hold y'all, on, man. Y'all can't get it done in the playoffs, man. Y'all y'all been y'all been getting <laughs> shorter and shorter. But but well, it was what a, it was what a, the Bengals. It's been the bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, I remember Tannehill throwing a lot of interceptions. Uh, I, 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 so. I, I was just saying, it, now Ryan Tannehill in the playoffs versus Ryan Tannehill during the regular season is two different Tannehills. We we had a shot when we went in the KC, I think in 2019, and then uh, of course the the I think we lost to Lamar and the, and the Ravens in 2020, and then uh, of course everybody remembers the uh, the Bengals when he threw the three picks. So yeah, he's a different different player. So yeah. But so, go ahead. What was your question, though, Chris? My question is: What are the chances Tennessee unloads Derrick Henry and goes full rebuild this season? I, I, I think it depends what they what they get. It depends what what teams are offering. Um, I mean, as we see, even when players are like D Hop, like they want, but like a first round or two first rounds or some something crazy like that. So I think. It, it, I don't think they'll trade him mid-season, but I think depending on how bad they go, it's definitely going to be on the table. I think it was on the table this year. Um, I think he signed a four-year deal, and I think um, I think he's two years into that deal. So depending on what they do this year, because, I mean, he, he's a, a leader in the locker room as well. So when you talk about trading a player like Derrick Henry, 
you also talking about trading away one of your leaders. So I don't think they'll do it mid season, but I do think if you know, if they're not making a playoff run, I think it's a possibility it's on the table for his last year in Nashville. I would hate to see it, but it wouldn't surprise me. If Man, that Jay, happened, I told you last exactly. night, Ray will, Ray will out of there before the season ends. You're about it. You're about it. Only reason I say he, only reason I say he'll last the whole season is because all the players love him. Like he's really a player's coach. Like a lot of the players truly, truly love him. Yeah, management and, don't give a damn about you know. that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the don't the management don't. That. But I think that's true. That's true. But I mean, like. Who do you replace him with? Shit, at this right. point, I don't really see. At, at this point, Jay, you, hey, 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 Jay you, you can finish up the season for him because I mean, if if, if uh, you know Jeff Saturday can finish up Jeff the season Saturday. for the coach, you know, won't you just go ahead and finish up the season? Go ahead and get oh, your suit ready, man. get your tie ready, you know, hey, you get cool. your get your Tennessee Titan red and blue on, and, and be ready to coach at least seven eight Not. weeks. Listen, they could they could do they hey, could uh, they could follow the footsteps. <laughs> Listen, they could follow the footsteps of the Raptors and go get Marcus Spears. <laughs> <laughs> man, y'all silly, man. Hey, um, um, just, you just, lying, man. Uh, just to help you out, um, you're looking at um, week one, Titan Saints. They go to New Orleans. Chargers go to Cleveland. Cincinnati comes to town. Uh, they get the coach. Then they go to uh, London to see the Ravens. So that's your first six right there. Yeah. You must the only give me you got is that indie game. Um, and then uh, after you come back from London, you go, uh, you get Atlanta, uh, go to Pittsburgh, go to Tampa Bay, go to Jacksonville, uh, get Carolina at home, get Coach at home, go to Miami, Texans at home. Seahawks at home go to Houston and then you finish up at home against Jaguars. Um, but wait, uh, because I, I, I ain't even gonna said, lie, I ain't gonna lie. If they had some receivers, that's an easy ass schedule. To, to, after the after the uh, after week six, it is is the week uh, six, it's, it's like yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. before the before you week got... six is a, is a cheat clapping session. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah like, I, I definitely got them going one and five in that in that first yeah. that first six. That's what I'm saying. That's real disrespectful. He ain't lying. It was looking hey, real oh, man. Man. That's why I said my take earlier. I said I, I said if you look at the Titans schedule, that first six is a is a beast. And if Rabel yeah. don't come out of there like at least three at least and three, throw, at, at least close to five hundred, like. Nah, I don't see him making it through the season because you got to take into account, like, bro, like, what what did y'all drop last year? Seven in a row uh, before the season ended? We dropped seven in a row last like, yeah, Yeah, but we – it's been a lot of changes. It, it, it's – yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, when, when you when you lose seven in a row, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth going into the season. And now, you know, you're talking about new GM, trying to uh, a whole bunch of different moving pieces that you're trying to work, and now you know that taste of seven in a row is still in in, in uh, your owner's mouth, and then you go off and uh, one and five start with this schedule, like ugh. talking about hot seat, nah, that's man, true. that's 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 damn hot seat, bro. You up off that thing, bro. You man, gone. Listen, I don't know if y'all <laughs> ever seen the video of the dude, the Jets player. That went to the facility and they changed yeah. his code. Like, oh, and, once and got cut. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna be like, <laughs> "Yeah, that was that was Jamal Adams, wasn't it?" Yeah, no, nah, it was it wasn't Jamal. It was, was Jamal. Uh, nah, it was Jamal. <laughs> was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they changed well, up his speed card. Nah, traded him away. Me. Nah, man, you ain't you ain't no jet no more, man. <laughs> That's how they're gonna do Mike Rabel. They're gonna have his stuff in the box outside, and they're gonna change his code. <laughs> That's crazy, <laughs> yo. So they gonna sell him here. Crazy, man. I think, to be honest with you, I think we're going to win the first game. I think we're going to clip the Saints, and I think we're going to clip um, Cleveland, and I think we're going to clip Baltimore. Man, you so I'm going to be honest with you. Go, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm telling you. You're so Carpenter hopeful, Jay. Jay. I love it. You're so hopeful, Listen. Jay. Look at that. No, I'm, I'm not. not it's that man's it's voice. not hopeful. <laughs> no, it's just a simple fact. Like, Tennessee, that's how they do. Like, Tennessee, will, people will always be like, Man, that's Tennessee going to look like they always count them out. Like when we play those teams, those 
higher echelon teams. I don't know if I said that right or not. I probably did. But those higher grade A tier teams, like, like man, we're going to get crushed. Like, look, look at when we played Kansas City last year and Malik Willis started. Every, nobody gave us a chance. They had us getting blown out by 14 or more. But we still kept it close. We didn't win, but we kept it close. And that's yeah, what it was a one possession game though. Tennessee, that's that, that's that's how Tennessee is. Like you'll be like you'll look at the schedule, you'll be like, Oh yeah, they're gonna get crushed by them, but they'll find a way to win the game. So it's gonna be a few of those games where it's gonna look like, hey, they're gonna get crushed and we're gonna come out and win. And I think one of them games is gonna be Baltimore. I think people are gonna look at that and be like, Man, they gonna get crushed. Lamar, all those guys, is overseas, whatever the case might be. But I think we're going to win that game. I think we're going to beat Derek Carr. You know what I'm saying? I think we'll split all of the division games. I think, so you know what I'm saying? I, I think we'll it. split all of those. Some going to some, I, hey, some, hey, some, some get split all right, but it ain't going to be them games. I'm going to be honest with you, Jay. <laughs> it's going to be them daggone cheeks. I'm going <laughs> to be honest with you, Jay. That first I'm game. I'm glad I'm in the headset and not on the and got and got dog going through the car speaker. <laughs> Listen, hey, I'm going to be honest with you, man. That first game against New Orleans, Derek Carr got something to prove. I got him going for 350 at least. He gonna light y'all up, bro. And he, I about to he can go for three. He can go, with, he can go for three fifty, but he can still come out with an L. That's fine. I just Going need to Jay, in this, in, in this Jay, modern day NFL ain't nothing. Jay, if y'all don't pick up Orlando Jones from the replacements, y'all don't got nobody to throw to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't y'all worry, better, man. I'm trying to tell you. Y'all better go pick up uh, mm-hmm. Michael Irvin from the Longest Yard and, and Nelly being Megan. <laughs> y'all hey. y'all, 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 y'all. Hey. We're gonna, hey. we gonna get old boy from All American. You hear? You hear how Chris <laughs> talk? It's a you hear how Chris talk when his team win eight games, man? We won nine. He, he hey, we won nine. Hey, hey, we won I, nine. I, I, Hey, I feel, hey, hey, I feel hey, bad for nine. everybody on earth if the we, daggone Lions make the playoffs, man, because it's gonna be unbearable. oh, I'm gonna be unbearable. I'm gonna be oh you my win. god, I'm gonna be unbearable. He especially had a daggone hey, tattoo, listen, Super Bowl tattoo on his daggone back. Especially yeah. if we listen, if we win the North, oh, I'm about to be an ass. That man oh. said North, boy. That Detroit education, boy. That ain't no <laughs> s <laughs> nowhere in that word. <laughs> They gotta stay off of uh they gotta stay off of FanDuel and uh MGM and all them apps. They gotta hey, stay hey, off hey, of hey, hey, on property. Hey, at least we hey, we, hey, hey listen, hold on. At least we get our receivers back in week six. Y'all ain't got no receivers to get back. <laughs> I mean, it took y'all only twenty years to get one. Hey, yeah, James hey, not hey. having Jameson Williamson for six weeks, man, is gonna be crucial, man. J- no, Jared it's not. Like we'll be all right. We'll be all right. We, we got okay. we got we got Amon Ra, we got Jameer Gibbs in the backfield. We'll be all right. Check oh, it though. Cute. Check that's it cute. though. I'm gonna listen, Jay. Put in a petition to change the name from the Tennessee Titans to the Tennessee Derrick Henrys, because that's all y'all got. <laughs> hey, that's cool. It's been like that for the last. It's been, but you gotta think though. Tennessee has drafted receivers. It just didn't work out. Like we drafted Corey Davis, and he came on the last his contract year. He got hot and everything like that. Like they drafted receivers, it hasn't worked out. So I understand from both perspectives to a degree on why they haven't. You know, and then we went after Julio Jones. That didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? After you know, 12 years of him playing, that ain't work out. So I don't know. They they just they they curse when it comes to that position. And when you finally get a receiver, AJ Brown, then you know what I'm saying. They let him go. And as y'all seen, if you look back at the video, Mike Vrabel was pissed when they traded AJ Brown. Man, they chose like, Tannehill over AJ Brown. Man, that's basically that was crazy. What they, did. they chose Tannehill over AJ Brown, basically. Hey, but look, we coming up on uh two and a half hours, man. Uh before we get out of here, make sure you like uh and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you go to the IOW uh YouTube page, like and subscribe there as well. And then same thing with these uh man cave uh uh man the man cave podcast uh and i, I forget is it fate uh 213 productions at the youtube uh channel 613 fate uh, 613, 613. Six, oh, i'm sorry 613 fate f-a-y-e fate productions uh go there to find the uh, man cave uh podcast is there and give them a sub as well and we'll probably have all of y'all back because we gotta have just a, a straight nfl show just to, uh I, what i want to do is go game by game uh on y'all teams kansas city would just take We'll take a, a 30, 45 minute time just for Kansas City and we'll go through the schedule. But we'll do it more closer to 
the start of the season after we've seen some a couple of preseason games. So I'm down. Uh, with that, I, I was I was ready to go tomorrow. I thought we were about to do that. Yeah, tomorrow. but if if we do it tomorrow, I mean, what knowledge are we going off of? Man, I want I want to see how some of these yeah. rookies look and these new additions look at, at you know yeah. at least through training camp and a, and a couple of preseason. Because yeah, it it all be based off of last year anyway. Well, yeah. we could we could do we could you know the way too early predictions and then we get closer to the season and then we can start doing some realistic. That's fine. We can do that. That I mean that might be the only way we get through at least half the teams anyway. So. You know what I mean? So we, hey, we, y'all got a fantasy league? Y'all got a fantasy football league? Oh, yeah, my. Shut up. 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 Hey, 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 Jay. Hey, Jay. Oh, my God. As a matter of fact, Jay. Thank you. Hey, hey. Hey, like it's a Like it's a subscribe. We shut you down, y'all, man. We talk. We all let y'all later. I'm glad you asked, baby. I'm glad you asked. As a matter of fact, we do. We come on the wall. Damn. Shit. Damn. Like somebody got their head cracked. No, no we no, call no, it. No, hey, no, we God. used to call it the Man Down Podcast, uh, fantasy uh, football, but n- we've been calling the the male invitational for about four straight years. So, oh my so, God, yeah. Jay, Jay, you could have asked that offline, man. Yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shut we, up. Oh my God. God. Hey, I don't want four years in a row, boy. Hey, look, they they put up they they put together a, a truce amongst. All the team owners that never <laughs> trade with me, right? And I still want. <laughs> Damn, I hey, didn't want to hear this for another four months, and I gotta hear it now. Oh hey, 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 so, hey, so Jay, so 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 two years ago, Mel won two fantasy. No, he won like three fantasy leagues. Three, three, three leagues. Yeah, he won three fantasy leagues, and then he won my IOW Sports Football Pick'em. <laughs> And he was the first cat from the IOW to get the belt. Like he got the belt somewhere behind him. It looks like the, it's right there. Yeah. <laughs> and that thing got, bro. Don't, I, I, I don't ever, I don't ever mention you. fantasy don't around this man. Around this guy, man. Don't do it. Because hey, hey, remember, no, remember, remember last year after he won. Every time he come on the podcast, he played the champ is here. The, 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 the champ is here. <laughs> hey, hey, man, come man. on, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey. Oh, matter of fact, matter of fact, he's like, man, I, I should retire. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. Oh, man. We almost made it out this show talking football without him bringing up that damn fucking league, man. Thanks to Jay. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good, man. But yeah, man. Hey, uh, uh, tell us uh, real quick since I I butchered it, man. Tell us where we can find ILW and uh the uh the Man Cave Sports Show, man. Let 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 us know what uh YouTube handles it. Yeah, man. You know what it um, is. Go ahead, go ahead, Jay. You 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 do uh you do uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, now you got it. I I I'll, I'll wrap ILW. You go ahead, do a, a six thirteen. Um, y'all can just find us six thirteen K Productions on um on YouTube. That's the YouTube channel, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Um, check us out. Uh Man Cave Sports uh Sports Podcast drops on Saturdays. Um, check us out. Me, G Money, Mike C, Wildcard Mar, and um, yeah, man, check us out. Like, subscribe, share, drop a comment, and we appreciate all the support. From uh, Chris, Mel, everybody else. And again, check us out um, in the Man Sports Group on Facebook. Yep. Hey, me, me and Chris ain't got no invite yet, though. I just want I want to throw that out there. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Cause it's, it's not like it's not like we don't be doing you know podcast. We don't know what we be talking about. I'm just saying. <laughs> we ain't got no invite nah, yet. I, well, Chris, you probably be I sleep, but I, I'm. Hey, you can invite me whenever. Wow, whenever, Chris, throwing Chris shots, be sleep. throwing shots. That's Chris crazy. go to work. Chris go to work and sleep, and then I gotta force him to get up and, and turn his mic it on. It ain't but. no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Jay, you send the invite on there, man. Just as long as it's Fridays or Saturdays, you know that's that, that's all I ask. Hey, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Mel out here, you. Mel out here throwing you. shots, man. Stop throwing water at the bar, Mel. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> All right, go ahead. Man. What, what can we find out of W? Man, y'all know what it is. Y'all can catch IOW Sports at IOW Sports Network on the Facebook, the Instagram, most importantly, the YouTube channel, and of course, IOW Sports One on Twitter. 
and I always appreciate man down man uh man we man I'm mean, thinking about it man we've been collaborating for a minute man so you know yeah yeah uh always always love the support and then uh you know uh I gotta give a shout out to double J and, and 613 with Mike T and, and G Money. Uh I've loved uh collaborating with them and doing the show on, on the uh on a uh, uh, man cave sports podcast, so man, I just I just love I and I just love it how you know kings can get together and and try to you know grab this big old slice of pie of this podcast world and we can do it together in unity, man. So I love it, man. Yeah, that's the only way you can eat an elephant. <laughs> I don't know where the hell you got that from, but yeah. <laughs> But he, that's one of them old ass sayings that nobody knows. I was knows just about to say, say, man. Like, was like, that's yeah, that's, a, that's okay. some old man shit. Hey, He's like, hey, old hey, man hey, shit, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 you ask, you ask the old head how you doing? Hey, old head, what's up, man? Hey, man, I'm just tr- trying to catch two flies with some water in the, in the, in the pool with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Hey, man, go check out all those pages on YouTube, man. Even Twitter as well, and the Facebook group as well, man. Same, do the same thing for Man Down, and uh, we'll catch y'all on the next episode next week, man. Thanks, Jay, for calling in, man. We'll get y'all on the show next time, and uh, we'll yes, see y'all next week, man. It. Peace. <laughs>